Hey, what's up, bookworms? We are back with another Talk About Nothing. And tonight, guys, I have a guest that needs no introduction. She is the first lady of BookTube. Please say hello to Murphy Napier. Murphy, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Any any time. Now, look, when I started uh, Talk About Nothing, I, I kind of did it as this idea of uh, kind of giving a signal boost to smaller channels. But tonight... Uh, you get to give me a signal boost, I guess, because I checked before we started. You're literally five times the size of my channel, and that just uh, that that's just very exciting. I've been waiting for this to happen for a long, long time. I'm I'm just it's amazing because when I first started doing this, you were already over a hundred thousand subscribers. It's kind of one of those things like oh, I can't believe that you know we're here at this point. You know, it's exciting. It's crazy. Exciting. Yeah, I mean, I when I started, I didn't even know that that would ever be a possibility. You know, I was just like, just hang out, talk about books. And this community has just gotten really big. Yeah, it has. I mean, I think about even when I started, it was still relatively small. And now it seems like every day there's some new person that's like, you know, tearing things up. They're like, hey, this person's like growing really, really quick. You check their channel out and, and stuff like that. And I immediately yeah, try to make sure I collaborate with everybody as soon as possible. So, but uh, again, this being the first time I've had someone bigger than me on my channel I'm, I'm just i'm very excited to see if i can uh pick your brain a little bit and see about what it takes to go all in and like do this like full time because i don't think i could ever do it when did you decide hey i'm gonna do this full time um i don't think it was ever really a decision like that it was just i really really enjoy it i'm a very social person naturally like i just i always want to be talking to people and uh, so for me, BookTube was just an opportunity to talk to people about books. Um, and so I've kind of always been all in, like from the start, it's like, okay, put up plenty of videos, talk to people, respond to comments, like chat, chat with people. Hey, Philip. Um, and then it just kind of got to be, it just kept growing and it kind of transitioned into a job. <laughs> long before I was willing to call it a job. Right, right. And I was like still calling it a hobby, partially because I didn't want to tell people that I'm a YouTuber as a career. Right. But right. Uh, <laughs> partially just because I've just never- My LinkedIn page or not was a big decision. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. And then partially it was just, I just viewed it as a hobby long past the point that it became that, it became more than that. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I guess I always ask everyone this when they come on the channel, what made you decide one day, you know what, I'm going to turn that camera around and I'm going to actually do this. What was that? What was that decision like for you? What, was there a particular book that you read? Was there a particular moment where you said, I think I can do this? Were you influenced by anyone else? Because like I said, I feel like you were doing it before it was like really big. Um. So when I, I found BookTube because I was reading a book, something happened that really confused me. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so I Googled it, figuring there's got to be a forum where somebody else was confused and it's been explained. And I stumbled on a YouTube video. And it I don't remember. It was either Jesse the Reader, Catastic, or Pulling Bananas Books. Those were the three big ones at the time. And uh, it was one of those three. Through whoever I found, I found the other ones, and I thought that was BookTube, three people. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that was what my BookTube life was for like a year. And then once I realized it was a community, instantly it was like, okay, camera, how can we make this happen? Webcam, is that what I have? Phone, cool, I'm joining. It was just, you know, like I said, I'm a really so social person. So it was just like, get in there. <laughs> No, that's that's exciting because I think I, in fact I have to take the opportunity now to thank you again because I was still using a webcam when I had ten thousand subs and I was I reached out to you and just said hey, I know you probably get this a lot I don't nothing about buying a next grade camera and you and your husband actually recommended this you know M fifty which actually has worked out quite good for me and I go back now and I look at uh, my videos prior to that and I'm like ouch, how did you get 10,000 subscribers with that? You know, so you go back to your old videos and cringe a little bit. Or I don't know. I feel like you you pretty much started at pretty decent quality, though. You weren't Lies. Lies. I've privated my first videos, Mike. I did that a long oh, time okay. ago. I think your first video of yours I saw was the, uh, what was it, Unpopular Opinions on Harry Potter. I think I that was the first video. Yeah. That was the first video that popped my channel off that really, like, made it grow. Um at that point, I was using a proper camera. So my husband's a photographer. Uh -huh. So pretty quickly, he was like, we're not going to do this, what you're trying to do. We're going to do it right. <laughs> so he got me set up with something a lot better. Um, what was your, what was, what got you started on it, Mike? I've heard you ask that question in these <laughs> lives, but I've never heard accident. you answer it. 
I was podcasting only at the time. And my podcast host, he uh, he wasn't really into book. He was more into like uh, just just comics and stuff, which, you know, now I know that there's like this manga thing. He'd probably be more interested. But I just never felt like I had anyone to talk to about books. And I had been trying to t tell him, hey, I'm going to be reading Will of Time. He's like, yeah, I don't even know what that is, man. So I was like, all right, I'm going to be reading Will of Time. This is a 14, 15 book series. I said, I don't want to forget anything because I had planned on actually only staying in front of the show. That was my original plan. So I was only going to be reading. Like, I was like, I don't want to forget everything. So I'll just make these little uh, like video diaries. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And so I remember I that really, it was supposed to be just like a personal documentation, not was. actually a thing. I was going to keep it all like one big long chain. I was like, what if my computer crashes or something and I lose it? So I said, whatever, I'll just go ahead and upload it to the YouTube channel where I stream the podcast. Mm -hmm. And the next day I come back and I got like five, 600 views, like all my viewers, all my listeners come from my uh, iTunes. You know, they aren't coming from yeah. YouTube. This was really just like free hosting. And so I was like, mm -hmm. what in the world is going on? And then I started reading the comments and I put like the first three up there. And all the comments were like, oh, yeah, this is great. You should check out this. You should check out Dan. You should check out, uh, I mean, uh, God, what's his name? Nate Bliss. All these Willits. I'm like, what is a booktuber? I have never heard of this. That's and that's so when I first funny. searched for it. And I was like. These are my people. I didn't know that this existed. I had no idea that there were other people out there. Other like, nerds. Like yeah, they like to read fantasy too. And that's just kind of how it started. And then I said, I'll do a first law video and see, is this Wheel of Times popular or am I actually pretty good at this? And I did the first law one. It, it did well. And that's kind of how it happened. So yeah, it was a total accident on my behalf. So yeah. I remember you mentioning that in some of your reviews. I actually, a lot of the books that I read, uh, as soon as I finish read as soon as I finish reviewing the book on my own, I'll immediately go and search who's done reviews and watch back some reviews to just like see other perspectives. Um, and there are certain people that if they've reviewed a book, I always pick them. And Mike, you're one of the people that I always pick if you've re reviewed a book because you're so thorough. Oh, you. And you and I, we read a lot of the same books, but we rarely have the same opinion. We have very different perspectives on True. books. And I, so I time, really every like- Every time I had a differing opinion on Wheel of Time, everyone let me, well, Bill Murphy thought this. I'm like, I'm, I know, I'm aware of what she thought. I watched it. So. No, but it's for everything. Like I read Trader's Blade last month and you love Trader's. It, uh, trader's blade yeah the trader yeah. you love the trader's blade and there's a bunch of series like that where it's like we are opposites even on stuff where we agree like abercrombie is amazing we like different things we like different characters Board, right red rising we had totally different opinions <laughs> on that series it's so one of bad. your all-time favorites i know and it's like it's good for me to hear you because you're very thought out. You you explain your perspective very well, but it's always different from mine. So you're one of my go tos that I watch reviews for from. I mean, I think that's that's fine. I mean, I feel like the whole reason I started this is because so many people had kind of fallen this trap where if you don't have the same opinion I have, I'm not mm. going to listen to it. And I was like, when did this happen? What happened to this? Oh, it's just the whole world, Mike. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I was like, well, I mean, maybe it won't be like that with books. And at first it wasn't. Uh, at first it was a lot of mostly poly. People were like, hey, I disagree, but I like the way you talk about this. Yeah, you, oh, yeah. The channel gets a little bigger. You get a lot more, uh, you know unique individuals that, that leave well, and different and fandoms and have different reactions sure well. sure and, and and you know uh we talked uh we, we always uh would message each other on, on instagram when we were talking about some uh some of the some of the rougher fan bases that we ran into don't, don't and, say it don't name names oh i'm gonna say it i'm gonna say they're already <laughs> mad at me one of the rougher fandoms i ran into uh was one piece because i said I was new to manga and I took the advice of a lot of the people on my discord uh, and they told me what they thought I would like and would not like. And they told me, I don't think that one piece would be for you. So I said in that, you know, series I want to read after berserk. Uh, I, I said that, uh, Hey, I, I just don't think that I know that everybody's going to say one piece. I just, this is why I'm not doing it. And people got mad. And I was like, I wasn't criticizing it, just saying it felt like it wasn't for me. However, One Piece is apparently for you. And if I didn't, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up everyone on my Discord wants to know if you're going to try to convince me to read One Piece tonight. So, um, I mean, I want you to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, will you love it? I can't say. I there's some manga series that I think I could recommend you that I think you would like. Vagabond. One Piece. I think you'd like Vagabond. I think you would like Vinland Saga. You you love Vinland Saga. I'm, I'm halfway through Vinland right now. Yeah. Right. I had a lapse there. Sorry. Yes, Sorry. I do think that you would like Vagabond. Um, but uh, One Piece, I 
don't know, but I'd love to see you try it because you're very honest. You're very good at articulating what you like and don't like about something. And it would be interesting because this series has a habit of making people say, mm, I don't know about this. And then uh, maybe, and then, oh, I'm all in. So I want it, I want you to get to the, oh, I'm all in part, part and I want to see where you land because I want to know if it can win you over like it does everybody else or near everybody else. Yeah, I've said my my thing with, with manga that stuck me away for years is just like the ridiculous over the top animations, the big eyes and the, the faces that completely change when they're emoting and things like that. They yeah, just one piece does that. Out of it. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons people said, I don't think it worked for you. So, I mean, I look at look at Berserk. I mean, Berserk does it a little bit and it started getting a little a little further into that as I got further along in the series, but like Venom Saga did it like on the first panel and then it never did it again. And I think maybe that's one of the reasons that I like it so much. So I, I, I never say never with these things. It's just, you know, I, I think that's at the time, a lot of booktubers were kind of making that switch where they were doing a lot more manga on their channel. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, they wanted me to do more. And I was like, look, written word is always going to be the priority for me. And I just don't think mm -hmm. I was cranking out stuff for that uh, uh, fast enough for them. So, I mean, I took like, over a year between berserk arc reviews oh did and you I, did I didn't realize it was that far spaced out yeah i, I did uh, after i did conviction i took a big break and when i did falcon millennium empire like no one was here anymore that was interested in me talking about manga so it didn't really it didn't really oh, do very interesting. well interesting so how's I, your vagabond doing i mean vinland saga vinland, vinland, i'm about I'm about halfway uh through the 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 the, uh, the farmland arc uh mm -hmm. and I, i'm actually i'm about finished with that one i i gotta get more of them i i think i only have to like volume six right now so i actually got to buy more of them so that's that's kind of why i'm at a a pausing point right now and that's why i did that that uh, little short i did the other day about hey help me pick my next one between vagabond of uh, of uh, akira and 20th century boys and it's I, i'm pretty sure Vagamon's leading, but I haven't actually compiled those comments yet. What would mm -hmm. you pick out of those three? Have you read all three or just? No, I'm still really new to the medium. Uh, keep in mind that One Piece took me a long time to catch up on. And then well, I mean, there's only 837 hours. volumes, so. Yeah, no big deal, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if that's true. I don't know how many volumes there are, but there's over a thousand chapters. Um, but yeah, no, I've read... I'm in the middle of Vagabond, or really, I'm at the beginning of Vagabond. I've only read a little bit of 20th Century Boys, and I haven't even heard of the other one. So I'm probably the wrong person to cast a vote between the three. Will you give Berserk a try? Let's talk about that, Mike. Well, I Let's talk about Berserk. Saying, I tried Berserk. It was too violent, but I'm glad you're doing it. And I brought this up because in my Berserk reviews, everyone was like, oh, well, I can't believe you won't do one piece. Daniel's doing it. Murphy's doing it. I'm like, yeah. And they're not doing berserk. And I am. I was like, it's great to have variety. Right. Sure. Daniel's actually super into berserk. Yeah. Yeah. At the time he had, he had only read like, I think the beginning and he wasn't yeah. nuts about it at first, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't think berserk's going to be the one for me, at least not mm -hmm. at this point, mm -hmm. maybe someday I might change my mind, but right now it's, it's too much for me. I think. Hmm. Okay, just the violence. You just don't, you, know, you don't like crazy violence, right? I'm cool. I'm fine with violence. I can't, I struggle with repeated depictions of sexual violence. Ah, uh, yeah. That's and Berserk really digs into stuff. Uh, and mm -hmm. with it being a visual medium, I just don't think that I. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm there yet. I don't think I'm there yet where I can really handle it. Maybe someday, but not mm -hmm. today. Right. No, I get that. I get that. Uh, I mean, because I'm pretty sure that violence is a bother because I know you, you do like some Joe Abercrombie. So I'm sure you're okay oh, yeah. with some violence, right? I mean, you just finished yep. uh, Trouble with Peace. I'm so excited. I'm like rooting for you to finish that series now. I'm, really, really I'm, it. I'm currently reading The nice. Wisdom of Crowns. Nice. Yep. Nice. Nice. That's, nice. I, I, yeah, I'm a huge Abercrombie fan. I read Malazan, but I have to take long breaks between Malazan books because they're so intense. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck between seven and eight right now. And Are like, you? Well, everybody's like, oh, you should just shit or get off the pot. And I'm like, why? What's really? the race? What's I mean, I'm like, not gonna I feel get like you get, you get more intense comments than I do. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Why? Sometimes, I don't know. Let's I, dig I, into that. Why do you get more intense comments than I do? Um, I don't know. Uh, well, let's see here. 84% of my audience is male. They can be a little more aggressive. 80% <laughs> male for me. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. I thought it would be higher. You've got four percent on me. Maybe it's that four percent that's aggressive. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. And it, it is it. Here's the thing: is it's still ninety nine to one positive. It's just you know those negative ones will stick in your head a little more. Like why? They do. 
why are you being aggressive? You know, I have not, I feel like I'm the most laid back, non-aggressive guy. So when I do get those, do comments, you read does, every comment you get? I used to, it's hard for me to keep up now. Uh, and mm -hmm. the thing is, honestly, if I completely neglected my discord, I probably would be able to read everyone. <laughs> but yeah, I do yeah, talk no. on the discord probably more than I, than I probably should. But I, I mean, I, again, I, I'm probably exaggerating, you know, sometimes with those, those, those aggressive comments, it's just, you do see one, you're like, what brought that up? So it, it really yeah. is just like, no, I, I put out a video saying I will finish Malazan, just not right now. Because mm -hmm. I felt like if I rush it, I'm going to end up hate reading the end. I didn't want to do that. You don't, you don't get seven books and eight billion words into a series and then rush it to finish it. So I said I was going to take time. And everyone was like, oh, you just need to admit you're going to quit. I was like, I just made a video about all these series that I'm quitting. I'm not scared of Malazan fans. I'm married to a redhead. You can't scare me. <laughs> so I was like, if I was going to quit the series, I would tell you I'm going to quit the series. But yeah, right. that's it. Yeah, yeah it's Philip. I, it's all Philip. Yeah, give me the aggressive comment. <laughs> that, yeah, that's right. He's very pushy. He aggressively guy. loves Malazan. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's funny because I was talking to. Well, I won't name names just in case this person doesn't want me to. But I was talking to a booktuber who we were talking about fandoms, and you know, some fandoms are are chill, and some are a little bit more intense. And this person said that Malazan was one of the more intense pe fans, and I was like, wow, I don't have that experience. I've had the best experience like they're one of my top no, favorite no. fandoms mostly nice, because yeah. they're so supportive and so chill and so excited and like take your time don't don't rush it just get do it at your own pace we know it's intense um so yeah it's like i take long breaks and i get nothing but support with my breaks Ex How i mean like yeah you, you get the odd comment oh i am i've read four books I'm starting book five this month, probably. Did, forgive me if I'm wrong, but didn't you regard the moon twice? I did. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I read it and was very overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think I read, I, I read book two twice as well. Um, and then I just abandoned it and, and, uh, and then came back later and, and I was in love. I mean, as much as you can be with Malazan. <laughs> right. No, it's, it's a, it's a love hate relationship. And then people were like, that's it. If I, if I, ever say like oh my god it's the most ambitious most unique thing ever people are like wow i just didn't like it as much as you and then i'll, I'll turn around and say but it's also a lot of work and it's very very right. hard and people are like why are you taking it so seriously i mean there's people that are always going to be protective of it but for the most part overwhelmingly one of the most positive communities that i was a part of was the malazon one every moment was really, absolutely really nice. yeah i can't even say that i'm necessarily a part of the community because i'm such a like noob but um everybody that near everybody that visits my my videos is just supportive just happy to answer my questions very kind when i mess stuff up and don't understand stuff mm -hmm. uh just a really great community yeah and that's the thing is a lot of my videos with malazan is i would be like i know you're probably going to drop in the comments and tell me i just didn't understand it and i'm going to go ahead and tell you you're right i did not understand it. right <laughs> exactly <laughs> there's some series me. where it's like no i get it i just don't hold the popular opinion and then there's some series with it's like no i don't get it you're right mm -hmm. it's it's something that uh, I, i'll definitely get back to i uh i think that i'm gonna i've got told the hounds Loosely on my schedule. Yes, I make a schedule this far in advance. Loosely on my schedule right now in August. So. Oh my goodness, Mike. Oh, How? I work in uh, I work in finance. We we plan everything twelve to fifteen months in advance. So. Yeah, uh, but do you I'll ever just get to a book and you're like, I don't feel like reading this. Sure, sure. It was called a. Uh, Does called that affect your reading experience? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so does. Not, does that affect how you feel about the book? What's about that? Which book? Any book, any book that you don't feel like reading. Well, okay, okay, okay. Codex Alira, <laughs> it was it was bad timing. I was like, I'm okay. not, I'm not enjoying this. We scheduled two books a month, and I was like, I'm not reading four of these in the next six weeks. You know, and that's why I said mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just going to step away. And a part of that is, I wanted to try to get away from the read along. I was just, I was doing too many of them every single month. I was like, wow, I just started the month, and I've already got four books planned. That, you know, hey, something new comes up. I just want to read it. And I, I didn't feel like I had the option to do that. I couldn't re re review copies or anything like that mm -hmm. because I was locked into so much. So I had to let some things go. And one of those was Malazan. One of those was Codex Alera, Michael Crichton doing the reread of those things. Uh, even the Stephen King stuff. I said, I got to pump the brake. I'm not doing one a month anymore. 
I'm just going to mm-hmm. do them, you know, save those for like the mood reads. And then I'm now I'm locked into Realm of the Oldlings with Philip and uh, and I'm doing uh, all kinds of things, you know, that they're always just going to be parts of rereads, it seems like. And it's just because, you know, like right now I'm doing the reread of, of Red Rising just because there's a new book coming out and I want to try to get mm-hmm. more people interested in the series that you've chased off of Red Rising, you know, so there's. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I did end up liking it. The, the books two and three, I liked both of, but book one, yeah, wasn't Oh, a fan. see, yeah, now I'm with you. Book one, I, I saw all the problems, but yeah, yeah it, it, it did hurt my heart a little bit when you when you didn't like Sorry. Red Rising. But I think, yeah, it's, it's fine. Yeah, you know, there were some things that, you know, you love that I wasn't like, Liza Lock Lamora. Liza Lock Lamora. <laughs> okay. It wasn't bad. So, uh, I don't know. It's only the and best book fine. ever. Whatever. Who cares? That's fine. <laughs> I mean, I get this so much with the uh, name of the wind. Everybody adores name of the wind. I, I, I've been calling it name, name of the mid lately, you know, and it's just, it's, it, 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 if you love it, that's great. That's all I'm going to about. It. If you love something, man, it's amazing. I'm glad that you love it. I, I would never take that away. I'm just not yeah. going to bullshit. I'm going to tell you the truth about how I feel. See, yeah, why the walk with Snora? There we go. <laughs> it's okay. I know. Every <laughs> So many people hate it. I like it's so funny because people jokingly, like friends, will use it as a weapon, like jokingly, and be like, oh, well, Liza Lacamora wasn't any good, so who cares? And it's like, I didn't write the book. I don't, like, I just like it. It's fine. Right. People think that, <laughs> that insulting Dune insults me. I'm like, I expect you guys not to like Dune. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's fine. It's not, not my, my book. Yeah. Um, there is something, though, I'm curious to get your perspective on, Mike, because this is something that I find is... I feel like brings a lot of, I don't know, interesting discourse to me and that I don't know how to resolve. I think the fact that we have platforms, right? So we have the microphone, we have the voice, we have the following, and we speak about a book. So if we don't like something and we just put it bluntly and we're just like, I didn't like this. Here's the reasons why it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. And you know, you just, you put it all out there. It feels like I think part of the reason why people respond sometimes very negatively to negative opinions from booktubers, right? Like we'll use Red Rising as as an example. The reason why it like hurts people or bothers people or makes people mad, I feel like it's because it's like, I'm the one with the microphone. I'm the one that people are watching. And so even though all I've got is my opinion, all I've got is my experience and like it's completely subjective because my voice reaches farther than the average viewer. It feels like it's just off balance. And so I'm trying to do better at voicing my negative opinion in a way that's like, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. You do not have to agree with this. Like, and please put your positive opinions about books that I hate in the comments because there's more than one opinion out there. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to get better at being honest without making it feel like I'm the only one allowed to talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm definitely with you. I mean, even my very famous now, uh, Name of the Wind rant video, and I don't do rant videos. That's what's hilarious about it, is I said in there that, I, I mean, I completely said everything. I didn't like it at the end. I said, but I want you guys to make up your own opinion. You know, don't listen to me. I'm just telling you why it didn't work for me because, and everybody tells me that this book is like the next Lord of the Rings and I'm not seeing it. That's all I was trying to say. But at the end, I do make sure I tell them you please make your own opinion. Cause I never want anyone to say, Oh, I didn't read that because Mike didn't like it. I, 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 hate, right. that. I hate that. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like, I don't want to hold back punches. Like I don't want to lie. I don't want to be like toxic positive where it's just like, oh, I only like good things and only good opinions are allowed to be here. But at right. the same time, I don't want people to think that like my voice is the ruling voice. And if I don't like something or if I hate something that you shouldn't even consider it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, I think I'm doing better at balancing that. (laughs) It's a learning process. I mean, I try to be positive. Uh, If it's a book that I just really did not like, I don't usually review it because I just don't want to just like trash it. Uh, I'll tell people how I feel about it. But I mean, that, that happens very rarely. And people, a lot of times you might get this a little bit is I'll get people being like, oh, you love everything that you read. And I'm like, no, I don't. Like, well, all your videos are positive. I was like, because I don't review them. And also, I get so many recommendations from everybody. Really popular books. I'm reading a lot of really popular books. They're probably popular for a reason, right? So sure, sure I'm probably going to end up liking in the 90% range of them, right? Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I think 
since I do weekly reading vlogs, I'm doing a review, like a dedicated small mini review for everything that I read. Yeah, I do that. So I don't really. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You do too with your weekly updates. So I don't really get accused of being constantly positive because I'm very open about books that I don't like. But as far as dedicated reviews on the second channel, that belongs only to. Um, oh, thanks. I don't feel like I'm, I'm getting better <laughs> at, at giving positive feedback on books I don't like. Well, anyway. Philip, you also tell everybody that the most recent book in a series that you've read is your favorite. And I love that about you. I love that about yeah. you. Philip I'm is so encouraging and sweet. By the way, I started this today. Yeah, that's another series. Mike, that's another great example. I don't like Fitz. I think he's annoying as all get out. And okay, I skipped right. the final book I know. in this the is Fitz what I gotta, I gotta ask you about. So most times when I talk about Realm of the Eldlings, I hear people talk about, I skipped the non-Fitz books. And you just completely reversed that and said, I'm going to skip the Fitz books. Because you went from Life Ship to the Rain Wilds? That's amazing. I haven't actually done it yet. I, I That's what I've declared I'll do because I can't stand another Fitz book. But yeah. I've gotten such strong pushback about that that I haven't actually continued on yet. Yeah, I'm seeing it in the comments right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Uh, Fitz is, I, I kind of look at him like I look at my kids. I love them, but I just want to strangle them all the time. Like, what are you thinking? You're clearly not. So I understand. I understand. But uh, but yeah. It's I like, don't know. Like, dude, I love hmm. Locke. So I obviously am fine with an idiot that makes bad decisions, but Fitz just takes it to another level. <laughs> there's lots of, there's lots of, uh, I don't like Fitz's in the comments too, but there's also uh, things like this, you know? <laughs> Wash your mouth out. Yeah, I know. I know. Listen, I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but you love what you love. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing is like uh, Fitz probably still isn't even a top five character for me in that series, honestly. Uh, and I'm on book number nine right now. So uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm a little different with that series. And everybody else, everybody else is like, oh, I could listen to Robin Hobb describe the grass grow for me. I'm like, well, you're you're in luck because she does that a lot. You're in luck and she will. <laughs> she will do that a whole lot. But I mean, well, yeah, she's a she's a gorgeous writer. And I mean, I mean, even times yeah. like I just have we're, we're golden fool. I was like, the book was fine. But I was like. It was really 650 pages of not a lot. And sure. I mean, that's just, yeah. that's just type of writer that she is, you know? So you're either going right. to like that or you don't. Right. And that's a big reason why I'm not interested in Fitz books, because I think Robin Hobb is a gorgeous writer, but you have to actually care what she's writing about because she'll write about it so much. So yeah. it's like, I don't want <laughs> that much time just hanging out with Fitz. But yeah. Angela from Literature Science Alliance also didn't like Fitz and wasn't interested in continuing on with his stories, but, you know, she has better self-control than me, so she pushed on, and she ended up being happy with the, with the second trilogy of his, so <sighs> go follow Angela. I like, I mean, I think she's really, really great at characters, and I mean, I, that's one of the things that is top of the list for me is if you got great characters and great character relationships, but again, I do understand the annoyance with Fitz. I do get it. Sorry, I just read that comment as you were talking. Right, it made me chuckle. That's excellent news, Brent. See, now Brent is, <laughs> is, is one of the, the holdoffs. It's like, the books are good. They're just not as good as everybody else says. So, Yeah, yeah. I mean, the live ship books I thought were just oh, fantastic. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. yeah fantastic. But really yeah, mean. I mean, love what you love. I will. And that's unique because I don't usually like books on a boat. I get bored of that really, really, really quick. So, Mike. Yeah. Don't, don't say that in front of me. Listen. You can have some opinions, but not that one. Well, so I mean, you love nautical fantasy, okay? Mm, I mean, yeah, so much. I think it's my PTSD from uh, being forced to read Moby Dick in high school, and I thought it was the most dreadfully boring book I've ever. Oh, read you're in my gonna life. say you're in the Navy or something? Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, no. you were forced to read a book. <laughs> no, definitely not. I think was I was forced to read books all the time in high school, and I ended up liking most of them. I, mean, I, I talk about classics all the time that I liked, but uh, yeah, the nautical stuff is just. I mean, if it's if it's like if it's like Moby Dick. It's not my style. If it's like Treasure Island, then it's my style, you know. So I, I think Treasure I like Island, a, I like yeah. a little bit of a, a little bit of a swashbuckling. But if you got great characters, like sure. with, with Robin Hobb, I felt like the nautical stuff was background. You know, everything else was really. I thought so. I didn't feel like she was talking about those black waters and going aft and starboard and tying knots. Sure, I guess she doesn't talk about like manning the rigging and stuff like that so much. Mm. I see what you mean. Fair enough. I just if we're on the water, I'm happy. Right. 
right? Let's see, who else did you not like? Uh, Jake Crispo? <laughs> Why like Jake is Crispo, this right? where we're fixating? No, I don't, I don't, I don't like Jake Crispo. Everybody wants to say, everybody's like, yeah, see, everybody wants to hear about the uh, the, the negative. So we have two very different opinions of Nevernight. Yeah. So, I mean, do you love Nevernight? That's that's one review that I never I like saw Jake of yours. a lot. I, I, I understand why people don't like him. I do sure. get it. I, I totally get it. It's, it's his style is one of those styles you're going to love or hate. I mean, me, I, I'm potty mouth in real life. So, <laughs> dude, I mean, Lies of Black Lamora, Gentleman Bastard's favorite series. Oh, like, well, see, language is... doesn't bother me. All right. It's, it's his, it's just, he doesn't make sense. He doesn't make sense, Mike. He doesn't make sense. <laughs> he doesn't make sense. He creates these metaphors and similes, and then you stop and you think, do you even know what you just said? Like, it just, <laughs> Sometimes I will feel like his books are a little bit of a fever dream, and I just go along with it. You know? <laughs> have you read any Mur Murakami, Haruki Murakami? I have not. Okay. His books are a fever dream, and that's another really popular author that I, I don't jive with. I mean, I, uh, I think and 80 percent of Malazan is a fever dream. So I I, That's true. I would be curious what you think of Murakami's books, though, because you like King, and you like Jay Kristoff. So I feel like you could is potentially like Is there a series like that this person does? Um, I don't think he might have a couple duologies, but he mostly writes standalones. He's a Japanese author. His work is translated for us, but, um, he, but he writes novels. It's not manga. Uh, but his, some, his most popular book, I think is Kafka on the shore, which I hated. Uh, oh. but he, <laughs> he, he, has, he I've, I've read a couple of He hated now. All right. <laughs> no, but dude, we have different tastes in books. So it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good guess. All right. All right. You read any John Gwynn? Did you like any John Gwynn? I've never read John Gwynn. Okay. I've heard really good things about him. All right. Well, now you're making me think that like we don't like any of the same things. I don't think that's we true. We do though. We're both big Abercrombie fans. We both like uh we both like Erickson. We both like Sanderson. There's plenty of stuff that we share. It's just even in the things that we both like, we like different things about them. Oh, Wheel of Time. We both like Wheel of Time. Um, but like for instance, you Percy Jackson, yeah, I'm a fan of Percy I'm Jackson. I'm reading that I'm with my like, kid right now. It's a lot of fun. Hard. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but like, you don't like Savine. You think she's a brat. She's my girl. Mm. Um, like, the, the, uh, even the books that we like, we like opposite things about them. Murphy the Snack Hater to that. <laughs> it's Mike's fault. He keeps bringing up me not liking things. I could be positive, but Mike's doing this to me. No, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about, let's talk about, uh, let's go throwback. Let's go throwback. What are some of the biggest plot holes in Harry Potter? Because I remember watching that video and being like, she ain't wrong. I mean, I, I, I thought about those things for years, you know. But. Okay. Well, if we're enjoying Snarky Murphy tonight, do you know that that video was just me being a brat? Because <laughs> I posted my unpopular Harry Potter opinions video, which was my most off-the-cuff thing I've ever done. Literally, like, I wrote it on a napkin while I was eating a sandwich, and then I sat down and filmed. No thought put to that at all, and it was, like, the video that made my channel take off. And I got so many comments on that video, because on that video, one of my unpopular opinions was that it wasn't a 10 out of 10 or 5 out of 5, I don't remember what I said, series. But it was great. I loved it. And there were so many comments saying, this series is perfect. You're wrong. And so I was like, let me tell you about its imperfections. <laughs> it was just me being a brat. It's funny you say that because my Name of the Wind one that I did really was like, okay, I just, I had everything set up. I mean, I was still really new at this. I had everything set up. And I said, I just record a quick video. I've got 30 minutes before the kids get home. Why don't I just go ahead and see what I can do off the cuff? And I just eyeballed my shelves. Why not? Let's see what I come up with this. No, nope. I, I, I thought all it would be was like people telling me I was wrong, and my watching my subscriber count, which at the time was like a thousand, <laughs> watched it go down. But it still to this day, I still get so many comments on that video. And it, it thing is, is like I learned I wasn't the only one. It wasn't necessarily an unpopular opinion. Apparently, it is pretty mixed. But at the time, oh yeah, totally, totally. There's a lot that. of haters out there for that series. Uh, I have learned my lesson almost. All of my most popular videos that have made my channel go high have been off the cuff. I didn't really think about this videos. Mm. So I have learned my lesson now. If I come up with a fun idea, think it through. Make sure you like that video because it could be the next one. Right. And you don't want all of your most popular videos to be ones that you're not proud of because a lot of mine are. <laughs> right, right. I, I, 
I look back at uh, before we started this. My your your most popular video has a, you and Daniel. That one got like a million, mm-hmm. but your your Harry Potter ones are still like sitting around like the eight hundred. So basically, my most popular video on my channel is pretty much like the floor for your uh, for your manga reviews. Uh, I, I've got four hundred thousand <laughs> somehow on my. Which tell me if this makes sense. Is that the floor for? I don't think that's the floor for my manga. I, videos. I might be exaggerating. I might be exaggerating. <laughs> I got 400,000 views on that video. And I thought, okay, great. I can start talking about horror content again. Horror content does nothing. Explain the YouTube algorithm to me. I don't understand. Can't. You would think, okay, that would bring a lot of horror fans in. All, how, how is that video so popular? It's more popular than like my fantasy stuff. I'm a fantasy channel. I don't even understand. Which video is it? Uh, my top 10 horror novels of all time. Because it's because it's, it's a top 10 video. Did and you I drop it during Halloween? Fantasy? Did you drop it during Halloween? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was it was topical. It was at a time where everybody was looking that up, and it's a top 10. If you drop, if there happened to be a national fantasy holiday and you dropped your top 10 uh, fantasy on that holiday, it would probably be picked up by the algorithm. All right. Well, let me ask you, since we're on this topic now, uh, I'm gonna pick your brain about uh like defeating the algorithm and and how the stuff. I don't is think I'm gonna help. Me. I will try though. You well, can I, ask me really questions. Is, I kind of just want your experience on some of these Okay, stuff. go for it. Uh when you were I should be hitting eighty nine thousand this weekend. Uh congratulations. Thing. Thank you. My growth has fell off a cliff recently. Really? Yeah, big time. And I, I okay. I, I started researching and some people say it's the shorts that shorts made it do it and stuff like that. Cause hmm. I want to know like when you were, if you remember this far back, when you were sub 100,000 subscribers, did you ever have that time where, I don't know, you just felt like quitting because you just feel like um, nothing is quitting really because of negativity anymore. or quitting because, no, quitting of, because, the because of the algorithm, because <laughs> it just feels like yeah. you just hit um, a wall. That's a really reasonable question. I don't know that I ever considered quitting because my growth was stalled um, specifically because because I just really like doing this. Mm. So I just don't want my channel to die. That's my main goal. Uh, So if my channel started plummeting, then I would be in despair. But the reality is that just channels can never, no channel can always be going up all the time. or at least no channel can always be going up at a great rate all the time. Uh, that just would mean that channels would just never stop. You know, like it, it just doesn't work that way. So I have I have periods of time where I'm really not growing very, very much. And I'm kind of just, my views are way down, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, I guess I, I, I just understand that this is just the way it works. So during those times, you just tighten your purse strings. You you know you you get a little bit more conservative, and it's just like okay, this is what we're doing, and keep working hard, keep making good content. Eventually, it'll go it'll go back up, and then it'll plateau again, and then it'll go back up, and well, just as long as you're not going down. Like the first the first third of each year, and I don't know if there's some change they do on YouTube at the top of the year, or whatever. It's always the worst time, and it's it's always the time where you get like a little bummed. And here's the thing. I never wanted to do this as a job or anything. So I do still enjoy doing it. Don't get me wrong. There's just, I've just, like I said, I work in finance. I work in data. I work in numbers. You always want to see growth, you know? So sure. when you go from, oh, I'm getting a hundred plus new subscribers a day. And then you're like, you're getting 12 a day. It's like, what happened? You know, how did that just happen out of nowhere? No, you know? I get you. I get you. My channel right now is, is in a good spot like it's not doing amazing but it's it's doing well but i've had like six months like a good six month stretch of like flat line basically mm. uh and that is obviously discouraging because if you're investing your time in something and your passion in something and you're like it's something that you care about and you're putting out videos that you're really proud of and and you're not getting the the kind of feedback that you want from that not positive comments but you know right. it just doesn't feel like your efforts are being seen that's discouraging but i think just as long as you continue to put out good content it'll come back it just it's it's just the way of youtube i think so however i will say i think that tiktok has destroyed reviews on youtube uh because my worst videos every single month i'll when i compile all my stuff bottom five videos is if i did an actual book review it's at the very very bottom Oh, same. Those are always my worst performers. What that's happened? A, it didn't used to be like that. 
Um, I don't necessarily, I don't, it could be TikTok. Um, I think it's just that BookTube, as well as every other genre of YouTube, has trends and fads. And um, like, for instance, tags used to be what YouTube was or what BookTube was. And those were the most popular videos and hauls and like stuff like that. And now those kinds of things, I mean, I don't make that content. So I guess I don't know for sure. But as far as I understand it, those kinds of things just really aren't, maybe hauls still are, but tags, you they're not popular at all anymore. And I think reviews just used to be what the community was. It was all everybody sitting down, reading the same books and talking about those books. And that's just not what this community is anymore. Um, I'm like you, I still want that side of the community, which was a big factor in me making the second channel. Cause then I could just take the videos that I love doing that bomb a channel that like the algorithm sees that you're consistently putting out like bombers and it's like, and it's going to respond to that. And so I just put that stuff over there. I get to make whatever content I want. And I just can say, I know how this will perform. So that determines which channel it goes on. But no matter what, I get to make whatever video I want. And this channel doesn't matter if it grows. This channel, I just want to make sure it doesn't die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I made a second so, channel. So, I mean, you said you made a second channel. Yeah, yeah just, just start uh, putting your reviews over there. Talk about non-book stuff on, on that channel. But I, that, that one's the one where, like, I don't care about the algorithm. I don't plan to monetize exactly. it. So I'm just going to... I just like, I'll just occasionally do like a live streams over there, you know, cause I feel like live streams here are, are hit or miss, you know, with how they affect things. I think like way back when I first started, Daniel told me to put my live streams on unlisted after they were done. I, I just oh, yeah, started he's told me to do that too. I think what I just did is like, whatever the most, whenever I do a new live stream, cause I only do like three or four of them a year when it's just me, just like an AMA and I'll just delete mm -hmm. the, the past one and leave the new one up or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I prefer long, long form content because I can't tell you about my coffee in less than 20 seconds. You know I mean? It's just, that's just not my style. And I see like, for example, I see my wife, I see my wife locked down on TikTok, and I lose her for an hour. So I'm like, so they've got the ability to watch for an hour, but not any one thing, <laughs> you know, for that yeah. long. Yeah, so. yeah definitely. I that's think I um, the shorts, you know, but, you know, how's that working out for you? Not really. Uh, I've, I, think, I feel like my audience, and, and that's the thing is, I, I never feel like I'll, I have this ceiling to have a, an audience like, like you guys do, uh, because I feel like I'm one type of content. I'm fixed camera angle, nothing flashy. I don't do skits. I don't dance or make a bunch of jokes or anything. That's not my style. So I feel like there's 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 definitely a a, a niche for that, but yeah. Uh, the shorts, I just, I don't know how there are some people who like them, but a lot of my audience is like, no, I'll stick to your, I'll stick to your, you know, actually talking about something for a long time because I will, I have watched some of those shorts. And I'm like, wow, you're talking like a million miles an hour because <laughs> I'm trying to say everything in 60 seconds and it's right not easy, but I, I did say it was, do a you good like idea. making them? I do because it takes a lot less work. Sure. Sure. You know, I mean, I can make like five or six shorts in like a couple of minutes. That's no big deal. That's and just so kind of funny. upload them slowly over the week. But it's, oh wow, it's good. How to do, do you like do that. that? What do you mean? Well, I, I don't have that. I don't have that ability. I think a short takes me a really long time to really? figure out how to concisely because I'm more long form like you. I want to have a chat. I want to sit down and talk. So saying something worth saying in 60 seconds is a real challenge to me. It's tough. It's tough. But I, I kind of look at it like, uh, OK, uh, you are doing the elevator pitch. I mean, business school, they teach you about elevator pitches. And I'm like, I'm not good at these, you know, obviously, because I'm so long winded. But uh, that's just kind of how I, I approach it. If I know I'm not going to do a review for a book, because like I said, book reviews do really, really awful. So I'm like, okay, I'm only going to do ones that I think that people are interested in hearing me talk about that long. So if, like, for example, I just did, I just read Sharing Your Faith. I don't really usually review sequels because sequel books don't do as well. Is I said, okay, well, I still want to talk about it. And so I say, that's a good idea. Let's see if I can do a 60 second. Just tell me what I did or did not like about this book. So it's a challenge. And I won't say that I always get it on the first take, you know, but, uh, but I, I can just, when I was set up my camera to do a short, I will just kind of look around the room. What can I talk about? And I mean, like I did that one the other day about, Hey, should you read the Dune sequels? That was just out, out of nowhere. Should I do that? Yeah, sure. I can do that in 60 seconds. So it's, I don't know. That's good. I, you call it I, I haven't found my spot with shorts yet. I've done a few, um, but I don't know what kind of content to make as shorts. 
I haven't right. figured that out yet. Something that I like making that's worth saying. That's not just like, here's a thing, you know? I thought it would be a good idea just because uh, I'll make them on Instagram and they do pretty good over there on Instagram. Uh, nothing on TikTok. I, again, I, I'm just not the content for TikTok, obviously. Uh, but with Instagram, they do pretty good. Uh, with over here, it's middling. But but here's the thing. It's like everybody's like, oh, you're only doing shorts now because they're monetized. I'm like, I have one over 10,000 views, guys, and I got two cents for it. I'm not doing it because they're monetized. Yeah, you don't make any money from shorts. I was told that, hey, this is a good way to get yourself into the algorithm of the other people who might not watch your kind of content, and they might be able to check you out for 60 seconds more than they will you know, a 20-minute video because my average video is 20 minutes. So I thought that was worth a try, but that's right when all of a sudden my channel growth died down. So now I'm like, oh gosh, should I stopped doing mm. shorts. You know, I have no idea. But it's also this. When time did your year. channel growth die down, Mike? Uh, it, every year, January to April is terrible. Okay, and then it'll so it's just been up. since January. Yeah, and then over the holidays, I understand because people were doing stuff during the holidays. But over the from from like May through September, it's great every year. That's when mm -hmm. I do all my best stuff. But January mm -hmm. through April, it's always terrible. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's pretty normal. I know that my numbers are always down at the beginning of the year. Daniel's numbers are always, you know, he and I talk about it and his numbers are always down as well. Um, I think, I think that's just normal. And I think <clears throat> a lot of YouTubers are experiencing even more of a dip with TikTok being the default social media right now. Um, that's where people go to hang out more than YouTube now. So there's that factor in it as well. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate that. I actually yeah, am like super that. into video essays right now, and I have several in the works. That's like, I'm going to be doing more of those. So I'm glad you, you like it. Philip I was actually, like that, but I, I wish I could do like, I, I feel like really? if I made a video about, hey, authors shouldn't do this, people would just be like, what the hell do you know? And I'm like, you're right. That's why I call myself just a guy with Wi Fi. You know, I don't, I don't know anything about being an author, but mm -hmm. you guys, you guys excel at stuff like that. So. That's very nice of you. I don't think that I excel at that at all. So it's always surprising to me when I get positive feedback on those kinds of things. Because like, for instance, that video that was just brought up, uh, reading has changed or something like that. I was so dissatisfied with that video. I felt like I didn't make my points well enough. I thought that I could have expanded on things better. And I got such a positive re reception on it. And I was like, I am shocked people like this but I'm really happy because I love making video essays. So if I can do more of these, I will be thrilled. Do YouTubers ever over or under hype a book for views? I said from the beginning, that was not something I was going to do. And I think I proved it Ouch. when I started saying that Brandon Sanderson wasn't a perfect human being, you know, because if <laughs> I just wanted to click guys, I would have said, yeah, this book's 10 out of 10. It's amazing. You know? So I, I've always said I was always going to be, always going to be honest, but, but are there some out there that do that? I'm sure. I'm sure there's, oh, sure. there's got to be, on this, but depending on this revenue to live, I'm sure that they do, they do do that. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I, I, I think there's enough people, this community is big enough that sure there's going to be, there's going to be flaws in every direction. Uh, but I mean, I think it's also important to remember that one reviews bomb. So people probably aren't lying in their reviews. If they're making reviews, it's probably because they genuinely want to talk about the book and two, um, it, it's always funny to me when people are asked questions about like, do you do X for views? It's like, man, if I was doing YouTube for views or for like notoriety or fame, I would have picked a different genre. You know, like books is not the one. I and my channel hated on everything because apparently hate <laughs> get way more stuff, way more. Yes. Stuff. Hate channels, drama channels. Like that's, that's the stuff that Mike and I do. <laughs> like that's not going to be. And my channel has grown far more than I ever expected it to grow. But lying about books is not the way to make it work because books are a in-depth enough discussion that you're not going to really get like you're not going to get very far <laughs> making right. stuff up people will notice yeah that's when people ask me for advice i say man just be honest because people will be able to tell if you're if you're bullshitting them they really really will so just make sure you're and do it for the passion of it because yeah. this is not this is not the place to come to get rich and famous yeah I tell people all the time people all the time <laughs> you ever think about doing this full time like it ain't ever going to surpass, you know, what I went to school to get paid to do. Sorry. Sure. Uh, and I, I need insurance. I need benefits. I got kids, guys, you know, things like that. And 
this thing can bust at any moment. You know, this bubble could burst tomorrow. You never really know with the whole tech. It thing. is a so, very unstable career. Yeah. So it's, it's great. It's like a side thing, but it's like I said, this has never been about a job for me. It's always been something I've been having a lot of fun with. That's why when people get confused when I talk about growth, and things like that, it's like, I'm just a numbers guy. I'm a data guy. And I like to, I am sure. goal oriented. I like to see, I like to see the green arrows, not the red arrows. You know, that's just, that's just in my nature. And I just said, I wanted to make sure that I'm being transparent with my audience. I like my, one of my themes is I want them to feel like they're a part of the channel. So that's sure. why I'm like really, really open about like channel growth and things like that. And mm -hmm. if, if people knew what we got paid on ad revenue, they would, they would be like, wow, I can't believe you still do this. Because it, I don't think anyone's sure. like, I'm doing YouTube for the money. I mean, I don't think there's very many. There are some. Certainly not BookTube. You know, like I'm sure like PewDiePie probably makes quite a bit of money doing this. Sure. You know, but, but people, especially like you said, that are in the small niche of fantasy books. Yeah, they're probably not going to be breaking it big anytime soon. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, this this is my job. I don't work a job outside of YouTube anymore. Uh, so I feel very, very blessed in that way. But I've been doing it in years and I've done it as a hobby. If I did this with the aspiration of it being a job, I would have quit <laughs> long before I ever was monetized. Mm. And I just happen to really like doing it. And I happen to have caught a break to where my channel has grown enough that I'm, you know, I have that benefit, but it's definitely not, it's not something that you do with that aspiration in mind or you'll quit. Hey, would you ever live stream video games? No, I'm not <laughs> a good streamer. I'm not a good streamer. I can't keep my eyes on the chat and keep up a conversation. I get anxious. Like it's easier to chat with someone else who's in charge. But if I have to run the show, it's not fun. Mm. I think I'm actually okay with uh, with running a live stream like this. But like if I'm doing like another thing, like playing a game, probably not. Probably not. And I think people would find the games that I play pretty boring because I don't do all the MMORPG and all that stuff. I'm just, you know, sure. give me a single player campaign game and i'm gonna just keep looking over the next hill you know that's my style of game and that's it's not exciting but i mean apparently there's like a big market for that like all the time i a friend of mine is like you should really put your stuff on twitch and i'm like i'll go over to twitch and i'm like don't think book content would be big over here you know i mean all the twitch gamers sure. left youtube because of how much they they take off the top for super chats you know so oh right yeah mm. yeah that's true um i don't know i guess i know there are people there are booktubers that stream games on Twitch. And I think that actually is pretty beneficial. Mm. But I feel like you have to have a certain skill set for that, you know, like to be able to be entertaining, do the game well, and keep up with the chat. Mm. I don't have a skill set for that. That's a lot. Yeah, like I don't think I'm funny. So I could never do anything <laughs> like that, you know? So <laughs> and all the time people are like, oh, you should be, you try to use more wit or whatever. I'm like, I'm, the dad jokes aren't working for you. Sorry, guys. That's, that's, that's pretty much. You a, should try to use more wit. Yeah. I mean, I haven't got that one in a long minute. time. That was, that was, that was when I was really rather new and people basically just wanted me to try to be like Daniel. And I was like, I don't think <laughs> anyone are close to the same personality type, you know? So I, yeah. I, I don't think that, you know, it, we've, we've got a Daniel. I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of be me. You know, that was, that's my thing. So I don't know. One that I'm I glad said. someone is. I'm glad someone's here for the <laughs> my, my kids love them. There you uh, go. Yeah. So uh, do you, I know that I get bombarded for uh, reviewing independently self-published books. So I'm sure you get mm -hmm. absolutely just like spammed basically the stuff. Have you actually like randomly picked up one, just went ahead and did it? Oh yeah, totally. Um, mm -hmm. There was a period of time where I had a PO box and so I just, I was sent so many self-published books. So I still have a huge stack of books. Um, and I try to read, I do my best to read one self-published book a month. I don't do it every month, but I do okay at it. Um, and a lot of them are books that were sent to me and I pick them up randomly. I don't I really have a system, just whatever grabs me. Um, I don't, that's one thing we talked about, you know, I've, talk about whatever I'm reading in my reading blogs. I don't talk about self-published books until I know that I like it because right. I don't want to, I don't want to bombard hurt. that person's career. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like it's hard enough to get your leg up in the self-published world. So I'm not interested in making it harder for anyone. So I'll only talk about books that I like that I've read that are self-published. Yeah. My thing with, with, with self-pub is like, I didn't want to kind of open that can of worms to where, 
well, you reviewed that person's book. Why won't you review mine? Mm -hmm. I, I know that that's uh, some people are like that's a stupid reason not to do it. I mean, look, I'm going to let some go through. Like, if Patrick like beats my door down, you know, Patrick's good at this. Patrick's very. Uh, Patrick mm -hmm. could convince me to read the phone book. He could, you know, like he recommended this to me so much. It's Ryan Cahill, who I'm apparently saying his name wrong so much. You know, he was right. It was really good. I can't wait to read more of it. It was really, really awesome. But self-published books are just. <laughs> a lot of self-published books are very small yeah uh, and that's not the author's fault it's just that if they're doing it off amazon that's just kind of what it is but i, I don't know I, I just felt like if i if i read one but not another one person i'm gonna feel like i'm disrespecting somebody i don't know but like you I, no I, you're I, right you're right um like i said i was just having books flooding in when i had uh, when I had my PO box open and I certainly, I look at that huge stack of books and I feel guilt because it's like, man, these are people that have spent their money to send me their, their story that they're proud of. So I want to give you the time, but I also have to prioritize books that I'm, that I know I'm excited about as well. So like it is, it's tough to balance and, and it certainly is kind of an open the floodgate sort of thing. You say yes to one and then everybody is knocking on your door and I don't have a PO box anymore. So I don't have a way for people to send me stuff without giving them my physical address, which I'm not going to do. Right. So that's, I just don't do that anymore, but I still have a stack. I got the PO box. Cause uh, I gave someone my address one time. My wife was like, uh, uh, <laughs> don't do that, Mike. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was someone that I felt like, okay, I feel like I know this person well enough. And I, yeah, yeah. It was, it was like, okay. It went, this took off a little bit more and everyone was yeah. going to send me something that wasn't necessarily on my Amazon wish list. I said, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Hey, Murphy, would you ever read Berserk the manga? Have you heard of it? No, I don't think I have. I don't get no. comments about that every day. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure you've probably heard about this one once or twice. You've heard this exact question. Once, twice, a thousand times. No, yes, it's okay. You can ask that question. It's okay. I actually have read the first volume and I put it down because I don't think it's the one for me. It's very dark, it's very descriptive, and it's very visual, and I just don't think that right now I'm in a place for it. Maybe someday, I'm not saying never, but right now, that's not that's not where my head is. Uh, here's another one. Did you see how many times undulating was used in You mean trick? six? Six After times? After the fifth one, I was like, Murphy is hating this. <laughs> I think ostentatious is the word that I see Brandon Sanderson use a lot, but he, did he really he say does. undulating? Raising eyebrows. Are you kidding 26 me? 26 times? times? I just finished it. Six, I guess no, I... six. Six. Oh, six. Six times. Interest. Six. Six. I actually <laughs> called him out on it. Um, when I was in Utah, <laughs> he, what was it? Oh, he turned to me at the dinner table and he was like, so what's up with you and Undulate? And, <laughs> and I was like, it's overused. So many authors use it. You never hear it said in the wild and authors use it constantly. And he said, it's a good word. And I said, really? Is that why you used it six times in Tress? <laughs> <laughs> he's, I mean, he's chill. He's, he's fine with me picking that, on him about it. I'm so blown away that I made their their mailing list, uh, Dragon Steel Entertainment. because they, they Yeah, never, I saw you never, got sent one of the cool boxes. It was amazing because I've never even been able to get approved for an ARC for Brandon Sanderson. That's crazy. So it, it really surprised yeah. me. When I got it, but I, I did like the book. So I'm just saying, uh, I, I to, to be able to to not only know Brandon Sanderson, but to be able to bust his chops, that's that's impressive. That's that's some strength. Right there. Well, I, I wouldn't say I know him. I got to talk to him, but I wouldn't I, I don't think he'd call me a friend. Mm, so so Mike to one piece is Murph to Berserk. Uh, that's, yeah, there you go. There you yeah. go. I'd, I would like to see you try it. I'd like to see you try it and give your honest op opinions on it. It would be interesting. Well, you know, I, I think that that would, uh, <laughs> that would definitely get a reaction Listen, one way or the other, you know? <laughs> a Viz subscription is only $3 a month and you have unlimited chapters. Is that digital? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, the thing was, it's like a lot of, because I mean, I grew up a big comic book guy and then it's one day I was like, I don't have the room to store all this stuff or mm. what's the point of buying comics. If you're just going to board them and put them in a closet and keep them out of the light, what was the point? So when I made, the I read digitally, digital, I got yeah, a lot I read all my manga digitally now for reading them on iPad now. And I was like, you know what? I love you got flack for reading them on iPad. Oh yeah. It's, 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 it's not your digital. Same thing when, when I first started talking about getting when I first moved to Kindle and I, you know, <laughs> one of my most popular videos, uh, when I first moved to Kindle, a lot of people were like, Oh, don't you? I mean, I, yeah, of course, I still prefer physical media with comics, I prefer them digitally. 
because the resolution is so good. You can like completely zoom in on a panel and it's like brilliant. I love it. You got flack for reading digitally? Yeah. I mean, I haven't done very many comics. It was like a long time ago. Like, do I read comics? But even yeah. Kindle? You got flack for switching to Kindle? This was a long time ago. I feel like Kindle's in the last four or five years, I feel like Kindle's gotten a lot more a lot more mainstream. But at the time, yeah. I mean, when I first started, people see me reading nothing but hardcovers and stuff, you know, that I don't really like mass market paperback. I guess they they thought I was some kind of bibliophile elitist or something. So when I said that I prefer reading my Kindle in bed, because when you're a Brandon Sanderson or a Stephen King reader and an eight pound book hitting you in the face if you fall asleep is not as fun, you know, this this weighs, you know, like Four ounces. It's not that big a deal. Ah, I wouldn't want that hitting me in the face either. And Why are you getting hit in the face I with tend books, to travel. Mike? It's nice to have this if I just want to travel somewhere, you know? So it's, oh, oh, you're always going to have that. But I sure, I still People impress me the... with what they find to complain about. Well, yeah. I mean, that's just the internet. <laughs> it's just it, a constant fascination to me. What What's some of the most unique complaints that you get? you got to get what you still read all your comics, cite? right? No, I don't read everything. Oh. Um, one of my favorites to to cite is, uh, and this was forever ago. This is not a frequent comment, but I got a comment saying, could you please buy more clothes? I'm tired of watching you wear the same shirt over and over again. <laughs> oh, wow. Man, I just thought. <laughs> I thought that was so funny because it's like, how presumptuous to ask me to spend my money on clothes when I'm perfectly comfortable having a condensed closet. I don't need a, a, like a huge wardrobe. I'm happy. Why would you care about this of all the things? <laughs> I Wow. I mean, I've gotten things just, you know, hey, I'd like to see more of your rock t-shirts. I've never gotten anything like that. That's mine's it's, usually oh, comments it, about my face. You know, I usually get stuff. It like cracks me up. Oh, I get comments about like you wear your makeup the same every single day so could you just get better at your eyeliner or something like that you know what i mean like no <laughs> or oh. oh i get a lot of comments about moving my hands too much when i talk which fair enough i do use my hands a lot um but you know just like those petty little like why why do you care how i do my eyeliner Mine's, uh, stop touching your face because my nose tickles a lot when i when i when, sure. I, when I start really really rambling i'll you know i'll do that and i'm like it's not like i'm like hey how much make, make sure i rub my nose six times in this video but I don't usually get very much about uh, you say too much of the same word or anything. Because I think podcasting oh, sure. for a decade before I did this helped me eliminate a lot of the repeat words, cut out a lot of the uhs, the dead space. the And that's nothing. I don't do hardly any cuts in my videos unless the kids mm -hmm. are being annoying or I have to sneeze or I do live in the suburbs. It's very loud. You know, things like sure. that. Dogs barking. But I don't know. That's, that, that's something I think helped me a lot. But uh, I couldn't even imagine what I would do if someone like made fun of my clothes or. I think the closest oh. I got to the whole makeup thing was one time I live Houston's a swamp, guys. It is. And I got I got stung by a mosquito right here. So it looked like I had this oh, yeah. zit. And basically yeah. like the first like three comments were about nice zip, Mike. And everyone would everyone would, like attack that person. Like, imagine if this was a female booktuber, how much everybody would flip out if you were criticizing. Oh, I get comments about my acne. I oh shit. Oh my god. Yeah. I don't know. To me, there are certain comments. Oh, I got a comment the other day. It was really funny. Um, it was it was a uh, good thing I don't listen to a woman's opinion anyway. <laughs> and I was like, I'll comment. <laughs> this, um, Brent, anyway, that's the one comments, I get the most. Is it I take Mike, sips of my see? coffee? Oh yeah, because you don't you don't edit out your your coffee I drinks. Used to. And I was like, you know what? If my 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 brand is, I'm going with. Hey, we're getting a beer together. We're getting a coffee together. Yeah. And we're just talking. I'm not going to cut that out. But I just I don't like to do cuts in my videos. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Those kinds of comments don't bother me. I think they're funny more than anything else. Because like I'm not I'm not insecure about my wardrobe. I don't need to have a lot of clothes. I'm very comfortable. So like if it bothers somebody else, then it's just kind of like. Could be better with his Mike. Could be better with his eye. Yeah, Mike. Eyeliner. Could you get better with your eye? I, I should get goodness. some nice guy liner. It might help clean the blue back <laughs> out of my eyes. That'd be great. You know? Exactly. I mean, uh, make your eyes here stand we are, out. Here we are in year more. four of this, and my lighting still isn't good enough to, you know, to make it look like I don't have. Are you okay? Huge bags under my right. eyes. Sorry, Corey just right. injured himself. I love it when uh when significant others do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best day whenever your significant other is injured. 
You know, I do have one video when I had Philip as a guest on my channel, my cold open, I was wearing a tweed jacket and I just basically, Were you did, really? I, I basically just did his whole opening. Hello, That's welcome amazing. to my channel on the best of fantasy. You know, but he got me back pretty hard to where I was like, all right, uh, don't start nothing. Won't be nothing. Uh, Cromar, you know, I, I used to get so many comments about my hair. Would you just shave your head because things like that? Ah. Or why do you got such an awful widow's peak? I'm like, I don't know. I guess I could take my, I could take my parents, but I made a whole video a while back about like my meanest comments. Did and the thing you? is, everybody's like, don't let them get you down. I'm like, I find them hilarious because yeah, I could not get you down. possibly ever say anything like that to someone. Not even a stranger on the internet could I say those things to. So I find mm -hmm. them hilarious, you know? I do feel like, at least for me, uh, comments about appearance, it's like, I mean, I guess the eyeliner one is more personal. But to me, it's like, well, I mean, what am I? I didn't pick my DNA. You know, you're insulting my parents more than me. Right. I can't control the way I look. If you think I have a big nose, then I guess that's that's on you. Like, what what am I supposed to do about it? I don't care. You know, it's like you can't really you can't really do much to me on that one. I didn't pick this body. Like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, mean mean comments don't bother me. I mean, like I said, they will stick in your head when it's something that's like we talked about earlier as far as like physical parents ones i'm just like whatever right those I, ones I feel are like just i kind of, it makes you laugh more than anything i take that approach of using self-deprecating humor first so that way i feel like if sure. you get out in front of it they can't do it to you because they feel like oh well this guy will insult himself he doesn't going to care if i insult him because i mean i know a lot of people think that we lose sleep over this guys i mean personally i don't mm -hmm. i know there are a lot of people who do especially when they first get started i've heard so many people will tell me oh i started a I started in my first video and I got like a couple of mean comments. I just haven't had the guts to go back and do it. I'm like, don't let anybody bully you off of this, man. Just, just do it. You know, but I, yeah. it does take a lot. Cause I mean, let's be honest. A lot of book readers are introverts, you know, it takes a lot sure. to get in front of this camera and put yourself out there. So. Yeah. Um, I get and, it. and I don't want to paint a skewed picture either. We've also both talked about like, there are comments that stick with you. There are definitely comments that get under my skin and like get in my head and kind of make me go like, shoot like everybody hates me right um <laughs> <laughs> you know but i i, I don't want to say <laughs> i don't want to say which ones they are but you know like some comments it's like that's more funny than it is anything else because like you tried you tried and then there are other comments where it's like oh that one was a little bit a little bit of a sore spot you got me there uh, i found them funny and i realized that some other people didn't find it funny because I used to actually like highlight them and I would post the, the funniest ones on social media. And apparently a lot of people thought that was me being a bully. And I was like, okay, sure. well, I didn't realize I didn't look at it that way, you know, sorry. And so I stopped doing it. That's, that's another thing that I try to do. I try to listen to my audience. You know, I don't mm -hmm. take criticism personally. I think back to when I first started, if I didn't listen to criticism, I definitely, that would be here right now because there was lots of things that I did when I first started. I was like, what were you thinking? Having a minute and 10 second intro to each video. What were you thinking, Mike? You know, things like that. Yeah. Trying to use a webcam and your the, the, the audio doesn't match your lips. What were you doing? Why did you upload that? You know, things like that. But I feel no, like I get you. always be getting better. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing this for seven years and I still, there are videos that I made six, seven years ago that I still think about. And I'm like, what were you thinking? Why did you say that? Why did you say it like that? Why didn't you clarify what you, you know, like all that kind of stuff. And it's like, that happens, you know, we're going to, we're going to mess up. And the best we can do is just learn from it and try to make the next one better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always be improving. I think that, like I said, I think with mine, my biggest thing still is my lighting. I'm never going to get it perfect because this isn't a studio. This is just an office. And with Sure. Eight billion bookshelves I've gotten here. It's it's hard for me to get my lighting set up properly. So I was like, mm -hmm. uh, it's, I get so much, so many comments uh, or not nice comments. I get so many people like other creators will drop them my you know direct messages. I'll be like, hey, I, I want to help you with your lighting, your camera settings, or whatever. I'm like, at this point, man, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, I'm thankful that it, it looks as good as it does. I mean, just for the fact that you helped me get this camera and it made me realize, yeah, autofocus is amazing. I'm glad that I have that finally, you know, that's, that's good enough for me, but that's really nice of you. Time. You've given me credit on that a couple of times and it was all Corey. <laughs> he, I, I, I literally asked him, to him. Messaged me, but it was, it was so helpful because at the time I was like, I have no idea who to ask about this. Cause it's like, I didn't want to yeah. go ask some tech head. They're not going to know what exactly what I'm looking for, or they're going to yeah. recommend me some $3,000 camera. I was like, I'm not going to do that. You know? So no, it, it helped a lot. It helped a lot. So well, good. I'm I think glad. that's great that, uh, that, you know, you have that in house. So when you started, you were already 
at a pretty good place. You know, you're lighting. Um, I yeah. started the first couple videos I made. It was with a webcam and it was bad, bad news bears. And Corey was like, you know, you shouldn't post that. And so he he was like, my use my camera. Sorry, it's funny. <laughs> What's that? My wife says bad news bears a lot. Does she? <laughs> she <likes laughs> well, I'm originally from Illinois. So it's just like ingrained in my blood. Um, but yeah, so he was like, you can use my camera, no problem. But he is a photographer, not a videographer. So it was terrible video. And I used that for a while. And then eventually he was like, all right, I just got to learn some videography stuff. I need to do some research. I need to figure out what's better for you. And uh, and he just, you know, he's a, he's a techie. So he was excited to do some research and figure it out. That's nice to have. It's nice to have. See, with me, it's like uh, if I want to know about what books are banned, my wife can tell me that. You know, she's a, she's a ah. teacher. What books are being banned right now. That, that, that helps a lot. Uh, so we talked about negative comments. And here's the thing. I feel like on my end, 99.9% .9 of my comments are really positive. And mm -hmm. says, what are some positive comments that you receive? Stuff you? I get messages in the mail. I actually physically written letters in the mail, snail mail. I get so many emails, things that people were just overwhelmingly positive about how much I've helped change their life. And to me, honestly, as a creator, that's the greatest feeling in the world. Someone's like, oh, I wasn't reading anymore until I found your channel or you know, you introduced me to Stephen King and it's like changed my life. So stuff. stuff like that will always stay with me. And of course mm -hmm. it means a lot. I just, you know, like I said, I find those funny and that's why I post the negative ones sometimes, but I've posted the positive ones too. I think, I think mm -hmm. I have at least. Yeah. I mean, it's the same for me. It's the ones where they say, you know, I, I haven't touched a book in seven years. I stumbled on your videos and now I, I love to read. It's my favorite hobby. And it's like, man, I can't believe that me just sitting in a room by myself gushing about books that I like has actually had any sort of impact on someone's life other than just like very basic entertainment. Uh, and that's always such an honor to me that I've been able to in some way positively impact somebody's life. Um, but then too, also, especially recently with me now talking about books and manga and trying to talk about them together. So like if I do a top 10 list or if I talk about something that I try to incorporate both because both are valuable to me and getting readers saying, Hey, I started manga because of you and getting manga people saying, Hey, I started reading novels because of you. Like that's such an honor to me that I've been able to help other people expand into other uh, mediums as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's just up to six with me a lot, a lot more. Uh, giving a shout out to an author doesn't get a book to love. Janie Wirtz, one of my favorite authors. Nope. And I read, I don't know that person. Ride Hell's Chasm as a starting point. I had heard of her vaguely, but it seems like uh, recently it's it's really popped. I think Phillips kind of led the charge mm -hmm. on that one. You know, Philip, he's just so influential. You know, he, he just, oh yeah, he talks to you and you just he he lulls you into believing everything that he says. He's just he's like book two. Yeah, dead. he's sneaky he really that is. way. Yeah, he really really is. But he's he's got a book coming out. I think here here in a minute. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm so I'm, excited for it. I am. I'm very, very happy for him. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that any, a lot of people ask me all the time, Mike, would you ever consider you writing your own book? I mean, no, the reason I read is because I can't, I can't write a book. I'm the worst Dungeons and Dragons player ever because I can't write a good, I just rip off everyone else. And I know a lot of authors have made a great career out of doing that. I don't want to be, <laughs> yeah. so I, I could never, ever publish my own book or anything unless it's just you know something that's like hey 10 books that changed my life kind of thing that would be the only thing that i would ever kind of like publish or whatever and my mm -hmm. life isn't exciting enough for memoirs what about you you uh you getting into the author it's game it's a different skill or? set yeah. no man it's a different skill set uh people think that just because you have acquired some level of skill of talking about books that must mean that you can write one and i'm just like man I've tried and I do enjoy writing for fun. I think it's a fun hobby, but in order to be good enough to publish, that takes a lot of time. Like Philip, he told me the other day, we were recording a video together and he was like, I started writing this book when you were a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, man, that's killer, man. You have worked hard for this. I have not done that and I don't see myself doing it. And I'm just like, man, I'll read. I don't, I don't need to be a published writer. Ah, uh, but you've done audiobooks, right? That's my dream mm -hmm. job. I would really 
can work for Audible. Absolutely. I like I read to my kids and he keeps me on my toes because he will not let me mm -hmm. repeat voices for different characters. I have mm -hmm. I spoiled him reading them Harry Potter and I did a different voice for every character and now he expects that. And mm -hmm. even when I'm reading Percy Jackson, he's like, no, nah, that sounds like that one voice you used in Harry Potter. I'm like, yeah, this is a different series. Like, yeah, but now I can't I can't help but think of that character now. And I'm like, that's so, so I was like, funny. he keeps me on my toes. So I said, like, I think that I would be, I think I would kick ass at Audible. I really really would, but yeah. We'll get into it. You can. Yeah. Yeah. I know that people said that you can like submit things and stuff like that. And I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. I, I, my things, books but... are on Audible. I've, I worked through ACX, which is owned by Audible. And that's, it works. You can do it. You can get into it if you wanted to. Uh, I guess. I don't know. Did you just do it from your house? I mean, how'd you do it? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I had a studio, like a, a narrating studio they did. Um, but I loved it. It was when my channel was, you know, not my full gig and um, I narrating audiobooks was going to be my job. It was going to be my full time job. Um, and I loved doing it. It was mm. so fun. But then the channel just got it just kind of took off and I was able to just focus on one thing. Um, and with me being dyslexic, uh, reading out loud and not messing up <laughs> was tremendously difficult. Right. So uh, I ended up shutting that because it just it took a lot of time for me. Yeah, maybe maybe someday. Hey, what is the name of that, uh, that manga subscription service you mentioned earlier? Viz. I-Z. B-I-Z. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, as far as this one, Daniel, I've already done that video. It was like uh, just responding to my most common criticism. Very, very popular. Very, very popular video. But, oh, uh, I bet. Yeah, I, I bet, bet that was a popular one. It, it was fun. It was fun for me. Uh, I've seen this a lot, and I can't find it now. But a lot of here it is. Uh, a lot of people are asking if you're going to read Chris Rocchio's books, The Sun Eater Saga. I don't think I know that. You don't know these. Okay. All right. Uh, basically, what I have described it as is Imagine Red Rising, written by Patrick Rothfuss. Really? Okay. Chris Farakia's prose is incredible, but you will see some similarities to Red Rising. It's amazing because Christopher, I know Christopher personally, he's never read Red Rising and he doesn't know anything about it, but he's been getting that comment a lot. But it's, uh, it's one of those kind of things. If, if you liked the way that Dune started and it didn't continue that way, I, I think you would like, uh, like the series a little bit, uh, but it's okay. not for everybody, but I mean, uh, everybody I've gotten into, it seems to absolutely love it. So. I found that a lot of really popular series, and that's not, this isn't me putting that series off, um, but a lot of really popular series that I don't like as much, like Red Rising, like The Trader's Blade, it's that like rapid pace, um, you know, action constantly sort of thing that I just, I like the slower, like the Abercrombies and the Robin Hobbs that just kind of like really take their time. That's a lot more my speed. Um, Cradle was another series that it's like, I see the merit here. It's just not mine. It's not I'm, my series. I'm not alone. A cradle. I don't know. Oh, really? Know. Are you not into Cradle? I read the first one. I was like, all right. I mean, I guess I'll give it a try because viewers sent me the entire series. So it makes me want to give it a try. It's so well. -loved. And I read the second book and I was like, is this all this is, is just grinding for XP the whole time? People are like, yeah, for the most part. I'm like, sorry, that's not my style of fantasy. Like Same. at all. But I mean, it's Same. humongous fandom. So I was like, I'm, clearly I missed something. But I mean, a lot of my audience loves it. And they were actually quite upset that I didn't like it. So, yeah, I did. definitely, there's, yeah, <laughs> that's one series that me determining, you know what, this isn't mine. Uh, there's a lot of like, no, don't quit. Mm. And it's like, I just like, I can't like them all. And uh, that one's not it for me. I, I like playing Final Fantasy. I don't like reading about someone walking around and just getting experience points. It's like the second book, there was a part where one of the characters is like trapped in prison and the friends show up to save him. And he's like, get me out of here. And like, no, you need to defeat this monster to go to the next level. Like, what is this? What am I reading right now? And I was like, okay, it's just, it's just clear. I mean, and you know, Patrick's like, oh, but you got to get, you got to get to book four. That's when it gets going. Like, oh, I read man. book four. So you've read as far I as I read book, book four. four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it, and I got tons of comments saying, but you have to read book five because that's where it really takes off. And it's like, man, if I got to read five books, to get hooked on something that is probably just not mine. Mm. Uh, yeah. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's great that people love it. Will White actually mm -hmm. contemplated. Very nice guy. Very nice guy. 
and no hey i'm just saying that the pro pro no progression hate. fantasy or whatever it's just that's just that's just not my thing I feel yeah. like the book world is still waiting for the next big event series like Harry Potter. Am I alone in thinking that this media is right for mega hit again? I made a comment in my my top 10 fantasy series about Harry Potter's that in our lifetimes, we'll never see the entire world stop for a book again like we did when Deathly Hallows came out. And everyone was like, oh, I don't know when when the next Song of Ice and Fire or the next or the next Patrick Rothfuss book comes out. I'm like, guys, that's popular in our circles. Mm -hmm. Those books don't even sell as well as Dan Brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's not going to happen. So I I don't think we'll ever see the world stop like that for a book it, again in our lifetimes. But mm -hmm. I feel like there's room for something big because I mean I mean even with the the controversy that that J.K. Rowling's had, uh, it mm -hmm. hasn't hurt the sales of Harry Potter like at all. I mean, look at Hogwarts Legacy. Has it not? Because nothing is filled that void. Nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. that series ended 15 years ago, and it's still yeah. you can't go to any bookstore and not see an end cap. Dedicated well, and to I would. Potter. I would even submit, and I'm not an active middle grade reader, but um, I read some, and I would submit that there are series that have recently been published that are astonishing in quality, just phenomenal, that by all rights should be the next Harry Potter. But you can't really recreate something that just the world kind of took hold of. Like you can't manufacture that again, even if the quality is there and the quality is there with some of these series that are being published, but it's not, it's not just about quality. There were a lot of factors I think that made that series just explode. And I don't know what those factors are and I don't know if they ever could be recreated. Yeah, uh, um, I agree. What are some of these, if you don't mind my asking, what are some, because I just made a video recently about a, a young adult series and books that I'd like to try. I've only read a few and I, I got this reputation as a guy who hated YA because what, what I said was I, I don't like YA tropes, you know, love triangles, things like that drive me crazy. Oh, I'm sure. fine. Like, like Maze Runner. I love Maze Runner. I like Harry Potter. I'm having a great time. I don't know if I'd be reading uh, Percy Jackson on my own, but with my kids, it's a great time because we get to talk about all kinds of obsessed with Greek mythology and stuff. So it's a lot of fun. But I talked about like Ark of the Sky is a series I'm interested in reading. Uh, I don't know what some of these what some of these uh, younger series that you think uh, are, are really really great, like a Harry Potter that maybe I haven't heard of. Oh, like middle grade or YA? Yeah. Um, I, I don't read a lot of YA. I don't read a lot of middle grade, but um, Nevermore was wonderful. Um, uh, Who's the author Morgan, on Nevermore? My, I'm trying to remember. I'm not in my. I'm not downstairs where yeah. all my books are. Um, I don't remember. I'll look it I up. I can probably I'll Google it. I feel like I, uh, I but feel like I've heard the name. The Trials of Morgan Crow is the series name. Uh, the Trials of Morgan. Um, and and it was very Harry Potter esque, like very you know that that whimsy, that magic that that you know you kind of feel. Um, Jessica Townsend. Um, I was also a huge fan of the Amari books, the two that have been published. I thought those were excellent. Um, the 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 last Quintista was a middle grade book that I loved so mm -hmm. much, but that's not a series; that's a standalone. Um, and then YA, some YA that I've really enjoyed recently, uh, S S House of Salt and Sorrow. I really liked, and the girl who the girl who fell beneath the sea was like a very Studio Ghibli-esque. And I really liked that one too. Okay. I'll but somewhere. I am more in the adult sphere, so I don't have a lot of recommendations right. for those. Right. I uh, just, you know, things that I think that maybe my kids might read and I can read with them and that way we could talk about it afterwards maybe. Uh, I think yes. Nevermore, Amari, and The Last Quintista are all fantastic middle grade books. Okay. Spencer, yes, I do. Scythe is one of those words I say wrong every time. We all have those words that you know you're saying it wrong and you still say it wrong every time. I, I say Scythe almost every time. And every one of my Red Rising reviews, I've gotten a comment about, did you say Scythe? Yeah. So <laughs> I, it, it happens sometimes. We, Instead we of Scythe? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you add a K? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so those words I think I said wrong my whole life before I realized I was saying it wrong. And then you just can't, sure. you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Redwall is great. I read that when I was younger. Narnia. I still love Narnia. But uh, yeah, as far as like new stuff to be like, fill that void of Harry Potter. I if I don't know if it, I don't want to say never going to happen because I mean, for the longest time, someone thought that nothing would ever fill that void of Narnia, you know, and before before Harry Potter became what it became. So I don't know. I don't know. That's a great question, though. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know what that what the factors make explode like that. Uh, because other series have had adaptations. Maybe it's just that it was a good adaptation because Percy Jackson didn't have a good one, you know? So maybe maybe that's why. Yeah, look, I've been I've been really bagging on Disney Plus bad lately, but God, I mean, for my kid's sake, I hope this new attempt at Percy Jackson's good for him. Cause I, I don't want him to I don't now that he's this will be the first time that he's, you know, basically, you know, he's just listening to me, but reading something before he sees the adaptation and he's just going to pick it apart because it isn't exactly like it was in the book. So I'm just hoping it's at least recognizable because like I look at what Disney did with the Artemis Fowl adaptation and that was laughably bad. Laughably Really? Bad. I didn't see yeah. it. So I'm like, I, I, I just got, I hope I mean, Rick Ryder is actually involved with this. So hopefully, hopefully, but you know, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Adaptations seem to be hard to get right. I've, I've watched enough. <laughs> but right. I, okay. I, I go in with very low expectations with these things. I'm a um, Stephen King and a Michael Crichton fan. I'm used to adaptations being awful. Just yeah. awful. Yeah. Oh man. Did you watch Firestarter? The new, Oh God. I actually thought I was actually optimistic because the trailer looked pretty Don't. good. I thought the castings were Did good. I like waited it? an hour in that movie and I was <sighs> I started I started scrolling my phone. I was like, it was so painfully awesome. boring. It was so bad. And I liked the book. I thought Firestarter was a genuinely good book. <laughs> the adaptation was so painful. And the thing was, like I think the eighties one with Drew Barrymore I was like, it isn't bad, but it isn't good. It definitely could be improved upon. So I was for this getting made and mm -hmm. Yeah, rough times, rough times. Well, I mean, it's it's. it's I, be I, I, I hope oh, for the, the best. Disney I expect Boston. the worst when it comes to adaptation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, know. we have two. We have Avatar and One Piece getting live actions this year, both this year. And I just don't want to be like. Well, down. I've seen I've seen Netflix's uh, record on live action anime. It's not good. Oh, it's I not know. Good. I know, Mike. I know. Well, I mean, Avatar has already had one swing and a miss. So we'll see. Well, <laughs> see, I now here's the thing is, uh, I never watched Avatar. It was, I was to the point where I wasn't watching a lot of animation when that really broke big. And so when it got on Netflix, I thought, oh, okay, I'll finally check this out. And basically, I couldn't keep up with my kid's pace. He wanted to watch the whole thing like back to back. I was like, I, I, I only had like an hour and he left me in the dust. So I've only watched like three or four episodes. Oh, okay. You're talking, you, you're talking about the cartoon. I thought you meant yeah. the adaptation. But, okay. But no. I did one time. Don't do it. It was on like TNT or something. And I saw that uh, M. Night Shyamalan's version was on TV. And I watched it for 20 minutes. And I was like, this might be the worst thing I've seen since G. Wade's <laughs> my car. I was like, is this supposed to be this bad? I was like, is the cartoon this bad? No. I was like, no. <laughs> like, oh my God. He made it in yeah. earnest. That was legit. Yeah, that uh, that was something. So That was something. I, I, don't, I don't know if if if, if manga, is, the live action is, is the medium for manga i think it needs to just be anime right i mean i mean like honestly, sanderson wants to make that archive, and i'm like that needs, <laughs> to be an anime. that needs to be an anime no one's gonna take some sprint seriously they're gonna be laughing their ass off at sprints yeah or cartoon of some sort like avatar was um i think i i'm optimistic i hope that both the avatar and one piece adaptations are going to be at the very least enjoyable but I do think that it's very challenging to take something that's animated and turn it into a live action. I think that there's just an automatic disconnect because they're two totally different mediums and animation and cartoons are their own thing in their own right that, are, that do something very, very well and mm -hmm. trying to completely convert that into something else just doesn't translate so well, in my opinion. Hopefully like these ones will be good though. I love Lock and Key by Joe Hill. Uh, it's one of my favorite comics ever. So I was excited. I was excited as hell for that adaptation. That is one of the most R-rated comics I've ever read. And then you watch that show, and it is basically made for tweens. And I'm like, what? Oh, no. Happened? Sandman right? has been really positive reception, though, I was, right? I was mostly happy. I was mostly happy. You were with happy that. with that? Yeah, so I guess yeah. it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, all like, of Marvel and DC that, but... have been adapted. What am I talking about? This is fine, right? Yeah, well, I'm specifically talking about Netflix uh, with with their oh. like uh, not the Ghost in the Shell. What was that one called? It was really it's a really really popular one. And it came out they, like it didn't. It was basically canceled before like the day was over. It was so bad. Ah, it just came out. I forgot. It's got John Cho in it. 
I anyway, uh, I think about their their track record with uh, with adapting live action anime and comics over there, and I'm I'm not optimistic about their their One Piece one. But I hope it is for you guys that love it. I hope it's good. I have I so too. I've seen great. some. I've seen some pictures. I've Cowboy seen some Bebop. stunt mm-hmm. stuff. Cowboy Bebop. I've heard about that. Oh man. <laughs> I was actually yeah, like, I've hey, seen... the trailer looked pretty good. And then everybody flipped out when the show came out. Yeah, like, okay, maybe, I've heard that I'll was bad. That I haven't checked it out. But I've seen some images, some behind the scenes, some stunt stuff. The One Piece, I'm, I have, I, I'm optimistic. Okay. My expectations aren't sky high, but I'm hopeful. Hmm. I mean, that's, that's how you can, with the adaptation, man, I'm always hope for the best, expect the worst. Like when everyone was trashing Rings of Power, I was like, I'm not optimistic, but I will give it a fair shot. And I tried, I tried, and it's just, it's just, it's just too painful. It's just too painful. I had every intention of trying Rings of Power, but the discourse around it was so unfun that I was just yeah. like, I don't think I want to, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to play yeah. this game. Yeah, same with the Wheel of Time adaptation, which is awful. It's I tried to stay positive on it as long as I could, and I was getting just dragged in my comments. Me and Madison were we're just getting dragged for being positive on it. And we finally got to a point where like, I can't, I'm a positive channel. I like to talk about the stuff that I liked, not the stuff that I hated. And it just got to a point where like, I don't think we're going to be doing Wibble time season two because we would just, it would be bad. It would just be so bad. So did you watch any of that? The wheel of time season one? I think I watched the first episode. The, that was bad timing for me. That dropped right as our adoption concluded. And I was on maternity leave. So I missed the beginning discussions of it and I would have been joining in the middle and in the middle, everything was already on fire. So I just didn't, there just wasn't any point. Mm, yeah. Uh, uh, same Scott. A lot of, a lot of the names of a lot of these, I'm like, really, that's what it's called, huh? But a lot of people <laughs> tell me I'd like Cowboy Bebop. A lot of people tell me that, uh, oh man, what's that other one with a goofy name? I mean, Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man would be something that I Oh, right. Uh, We'll see. I'm, I never say never to any of these any of these manga. So I, I don't know. I, I feel like American comics have gone so downhill. Uh, there's there's room in my life to uh, to to pick up some of these more of these manga that sound like you know they're actually so good. You know, they actually like hold their writers accountable and you know make sure that stories are good and things like that. But this does help. Apparently, the showrunner of One Piece is a huge One Piece fan. That's Big great. Time. I'm not convinced the Will of Time or the or the Rings of Power showrunners actually have love for the source material. So, yeah, yeah the showrunner of One Piece actually got the job. He almost didn't get the job. He had a meeting with Oda, and Oda was going to tell him no. But then he talked about how One Piece has changed his life, just very personally affected him. And then Oda, that was when he said, okay, you know what? Yes, because this series actually means something to you. And, uh, and he was like, I don't know that it can be adapted well, but if it can... I want to be the one to try because I will put everything into it. And it's like, man, all right, let's go. Let's try it. Well, that's great. Like the guy who's uh, doing House of Dragon, huge, Ryan Connie, huge, huge fan of the series, of the books. And he, George is like his idol. So he wanted to do it right by him. So I was very, very confident in that. But anytime I see like a showrunner attached and all they're talking about is like how they're going to change everything. I was like, all right, well, you know, hey, that's a thing. We learned a ton about volcanoes and rings of power. That's when I bailed is when Galadriel like basically makes me angry eyebrows at a volcanic blast. It's fine. I'm just like, all right, this is, this is like an MCU movie and Lord of the Rings is not an MCU movie. Sorry. So yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. So, Hey, let's talk about something more positive. What is maybe some of the biggest fantasy series you haven't read yet that you're interested in? Oh, any- that's a good question. I feel I'm like about you to start everything the... at this point, right? <laughs> no, you everything. I'm, I'm about to start the magicians. That's either going to be a big win or a big miss. Uh, the show is a big heard, miss for me. <laughs> I've heard very mixed things about it. Um, I don't know. As far as super popular fantasy series, I do feel like I'm hitting a lot of the big ones. Mm. So I don't know of any others off the top of my head uh, that are super big. So that that was a very interesting answer. What about you? Do you have any? Oh, John I mean, Gwynn, I still need to give a go. There's a ton of uh, of series that I want to try, but with me is like when I'm in the middle of a long series, I don't like to start a bunch of other ones. So with me, mm. it was like I'm going to finish Realm of the Elderlings, then I'll move along to something. And I had to think about you know here's five 
fantasy series I'd like to consider starting after I finish Realm of the Elderlings. And of course, all the comments are series that I didn't list. And that, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, I'm always going to have something to read. That's not really a problem. But I do feel like I've gotten to the point where I'm getting a lot of the heavy hitters out. And, mm -hmm. you know, after I finish this, I finished Malazan. Everybody wants me to read a uh, book of the new sun. And I'm like, that just sounds like it's too smart for me. I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm past the point where uh, I'm going to read books. That I feel like are too intelligent for me. You know, I don't know. Malazan's too smart for me and I'm still taking exactly. a swing and at I think it. Malazan's what opened my eyes to that, that like, you know, it's sometimes not everything's going to be for everyone. And I do like Malazan. I try to get this across people. It's just, it is a big commitment because no, a lot of people oh, are like, yeah, oh, don't worry. Don't worry about it if you don't understand. I'm not that type of reader. So that's very, very hard for me. But yeah. Oh, I am. It's like, it's like reading. I'm a day. very open-handed reader. Really? It's like, if I don't understand this, that's okay. It'll come back around. I'll figure it out eventually. Or I'll mess it up and people in the comments will explain it to me. It is it is what it is. Did you even read this book, bro? Yeah, I got that a lot. <laughs> all my, I think... like all my Will of Time ones, yeah. <laughs> I think when, at least in my experience... When I do a dedicated, oh, I didn't like the Green Bone Saga. No when I do, <laughs> when I do a dedicated like review. Though, right? But I bet you like Poppy War. No, I haven't oh, even tried it. Right. Don't. Um, <laughs> when I do a dedicated review, I dig into it. Uh, so I feel like the, did you even read it, bro? Like those comments only come across if I don't like something and explain why I don't like it. But if I, if I at least like something, then I don't, if I, if I mess something up, people are generally fine. Uh, absolutely. I, not in bra, but I get bro. Uh, here's the thing is. I call like, you bra. I'll give you an example. i give you an example. Uh, when I read book seven or eight of Will of Time, it's been a while. I mentioned that I didn't under, I didn't even know that Rand had Kalendor in this battle. And everyone, it's right here on page 342. Did you even read this? I'm like, yeah, believe it or not, guys, every once in a while, my mind can drift for a second and I'll miss a tiny detail. And that's one of the reasons I stopped doing the uh, the spoiler reviews because everyone just wanted a cliff notes. And they, if you didn't mention every single tiny little tidbit of those books, people would just snap. And that's why I quit after, after Dresden Files. After Dresden Files, I said, I, I'm not doing oh, these sure. anymore. That's interesting. Yeah, you did. You did do more of like uh, beat by beat reviews mm -hmm. for a long time there. I have never done beat by beat. Well, my Gentleman Bastards reviews are, are more that way. But for the most part, I don't do beat by beat reviews. I usually am just like, let's hang out and chat. And that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. How dare I? Yeah. Uh <laughs> So uh, when you read Wheel of Time, we were pretty much finishing at the same time because we were both going to try to finish it before Jordan Con that year before it got canceled. Right. Uh, I felt like we had all somewhat of similar reactions to the books. We just liked different characters a lot and things uh -huh. like that. So I didn't feel like we were too far off on that. But no, it, I think there were a few characters that, that we differed on, but for the most part. Yeah, like you liked Elaine and I didn't understand, you know, or, or, or wait, Egwene, not Elaine. Wait, which one? Which one did you like and I didn't? Dude, I don't even remember. It's been so yeah. long. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That feels like a lifetime ago. And you, how, how often do you get asked uh, when you're going to reread Will of Time? Um, I don't, not so much anymore. Uh, when I first. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Um, when I first finished it, that was definitely a question. And when I first finished it, I was like, I'm definitely rereading this. Uh, but with more distance, I still think I will someday, but um, it's not it's not one of my top series of all time. I have a great appreciation for it, and I really loved how it ended, but I don't feel in a hurry to read it again. Are you going to read it again soon? Uh, with those things, I always say never say never. Uh, with me, is I'm not as young as you, and I don't think I'll ever <laughs> be able to finish reading all the stuff that I want to. Yeah. So do I really have it in me to read 4 million words again that I've already read? I mean, again, hopefully someday I'll get to the point where I'm retirement age and I can just do nothing but read. That'd be great. But uh, yeah, right now I, I, I say it's a no, it's a no for me, but it, it again, it isn't because I dislike it or anything. It's more just, there's so many other great things that I want to read. So that makes sense. 
I think that I would a lot be of people the, aren't be more of the spot reader kind of thing. If they ever put out a good Wheel of Time adaptation and I wanted like a refresher, I think maybe yeah. I would do that. Hey, can I ask you like a peek behind the curtain kind of question? Yeah, go for it. Since our videos are waist up, do you uh -huh. wear pajama pants in every single video you record? Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when I made that video where I was putting together shells, people were like, oh my God, you have legs. I'm like, yeah, but I'm actually, you know, not wearing something that's just like totally embarrassing, like Christmas pajama pants in June. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so I sit on a little stool, like I, it's actually a kid's stool that I stole from my son. Um, so like I'm down low to the ground. And so if I get up to get a book, then sometimes I, I'll, I'm bad about like, I'll keep talking as I'm moving to go get a book. And my husband, he's like, I have to cut you off because you're wearing ex Christmas pajama pants. Like, you, you can't. <laughs> it's really obvious. That, or, like, I'll laugh and I'll kick my legs up and you'll see my my pajama pants uh, go up into the screen. And it's like, ah, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at this point, I, I feel like it wouldn't really it'd bother others more than it would bother me. But do you keep a spreadsheet yeah. for your TBR? Uh. <laughs> So I have a wonderful friend who keeps up with all my reading. She's you have, an, you have a reading assistant. She, she wants to. Yeah, I got to get to that level, guys. When she you get is, uh, five times the size of me, you get to no, have a reading assistant. All right. Does she's YouTube just send a it to very, you? Or? No, she's just a, a very kind person. She She's obsessed with spreadsheets. She just loves them. And so any book that I say that I've mentioned in passing that I would like to read someday, it goes on the spreadsheet. Or any book that I have read, it goes on the spreadsheet. And the reading vlog slash review where I discuss it goes on the spreadsheet so that people can easily access a review for any book that I've read. And I just have to put it in the description of my videos. And it's like, man, I'm not an organized person, even a little bit. But I, I get to have some organization follow me around. <laughs> I, I, I'm too organized. Uh, I'm, I'm married to the spreadsheet. Like I said, I work in finance. We basically came out of the womb with it. Um, but here's my thing. As I talk about, I do plan my TBR almost a year in advance. It's, it's never that, that kind of thing where I'm like, this is it. Can't change. Like if I showed you in December, what my list looked like in January, you'd be like, you didn't read half of these, you know, that's just the thing. It's really just, I'm, I'm trying to plan because I have so many of these series that I want to mm -hmm. read. I don't want anything just to get buried. And also there's a lot of things of, oh, I've been putting that one off for two years. Maybe I should prioritize. Like I'm reading We Are the Dead, that series by Mike Shackle. Read that right now because he sent me that book two years ago. And I was like, hey, maybe I should go ahead and just give this one a try. And I, I loved it, you know? So it's really with me just making sure that nothing gets buried because things can tend to get buried, especially when you have wonderful viewers that send you things. Things do tend to get buried and you get so many recommendations. And then I, then I had this thing on discord where everybody's reading something. It sounds awesome. And you get that FOMO and you're like, well, I got to read this now too. You know, that's going to happen from time to time. So that's mm -hmm. why I try not to plan so far ahead, but I do, I do plan far ahead. Uh, if it's the weekend, Jane, I, they, that, that's, that, that's it. That's it. And you know, I get to work from home I mean, for two days a week. It's yeah, it's everything. Why would anybody care? Who cares what you're wearing? I mean, I've gotten to the point now where I've realized, hey, when I drop the kids off at school on Tuesdays and Fridays, maybe I shouldn't be wearing the pajama pants when I drop them off. I might be embarrassed. They might get me close to embarrassment age. I'm trying to think. If my parents had done that at that age. Would I have been? Yeah, I'd have been embarrassed. Uh, How old are your kiddos? Sure. Ten and seven. Yeah, it's time to wear real pants. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's before care, you know, because uh, days I go to the office, we're both gone so early. We have to pick them to before care. And I'm like, yeah, it's six in the morning. There ain't nobody here. But sure enough, every time I get out to help them with like a backpack or something, there's always like a group of kids. I'm like, cool. why are you going to the office in pajama pants? I go to the office. I just drop them off up front. But, you know. Oh, OK. Ever since uh, the virus shall not be named, they make the kids carry every single book that they have in their backpack nonstop. You're not allowed to leave anything there. Even still, uh, but the backpacks are so heavy. I'll get out of the car and I'll help them get their backpacks out of the trunk because they can't carry them in the car. They're too big. So I yeah. have to get out of the car and, and help them with that. And that's when it's like, oh, yeah, maybe I should start to, you know, maybe switch to like some athletic pants or something before I drop. Mm -hmm. you know, My not? kiddos are still young enough that they have little pamphlets. They don't have actual books. Uh, so it's, 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 it's that the and they give them and they give them laptops now too. And I'm like, what? Yeah, right. Right. That was like, that was like dreaming of the future 
when we were kids. You know, it's like that's I, wild. How can a school system afford a laptop for every child? I don't know. They go to public school, so I have no idea. Wow, that's <laughs> it's impressive. Not what I would call a fancy a fancy district or anything, but yeah. yeah. Shoot, I don't think our school has that because my nieces are in the same school as my kids, and they do. I don't think they have laptops. Mm -hmm. Are your kids like not really necessarily a reading age, but you like reading to them age yet? Yeah, my son is learning to read and write. He's six. Um, and I do read with him. Oh, golly. I'm sorry. I'm not reading. You just shake everything. Okay. I do read with him. My daughter, she's three. She's super yeah. not interested in sitting still. My uh, my youngest is uh, autistic, so he's not really interested in the whole books thing yet, uh, right. unless it's just tearing them up. Uh, right. But my oldest is actually dyslexic, so that's why I've been reading with him. And there's this setting. Twins. On, yeah, he's this setting on this uh, on the Kindle that has this like dyslexic mode, and he said it actually does uh -huh. make a difference. Does it help him? Well, good. It says, yeah, yeah, and that, that, that's amazing to me. But uh, I think that's why when I started reading Percy Jackson and Percy's dyslexic, I was like going to ask about that. Immediately, he's like, "This is it. This is this is for mm -hmm. me." Plus, he's really into Greek stuff, so it's mm -hmm. just I think it was just perfect timing for him because. Harry Potter, once you get to like about book five or so, if you're not a teenager yet, I don't know really how well it would click for you. Because it started sure. getting like King Angst and the girlfriends and stuff. And he just. Yeah. Really I think Rick Riordan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, I think Rick Riordan does a really good job of incorporating dyslexia and not just making it like garnishing where it's actually a part of the story and a part of Percy's life. And it, I, I'm dyslexic and reading it, I, it felt really good. To just be like, yeah, that you're right. That was, you know, something will be on the page. And I'm like, I can't read that. And then Percy will acknowledge, I can't read that. And it's like, ah, oh, Nino. Yeah, it makes me wonder if, 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 if Rick Riordan's, uh, if he is he dyslexic or does he have like really good I think his son groups? is. Okay. So yeah, he's got, you got that, you got that in house focus group. That's the way. That's why I said like Joe mm -hmm. Hill has no excuse not to be a great horror writer when he had Stephen King right there. You have that, you have that resource. No <laughs> excuse. Go. No excuse. So have you read any Joe Hill before? No, I haven't I mean, read any Joe Hill. Still, I've read nine King books. What's up? So you're, you're still pretty light on King in comparison. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if you, you, you checked out the He's very hit or miss for me. Um, Pet Cemetery, one of my all-time favorite standalones. And mm -hmm. several of his books have been good. And uh, several of his books have been not so good. Mm -hmm. So I, I take him slow because he's he's not been consistent for me. Or what are some ones you've loved? So I can have some happy, happy feelings here. Pet Cemetery was excellent. Misery was very good. Outstanding. Um, 11-22-63 was, is that right? Did I say the yeah. date right? Thanks. Yes. I enjoyed that one. I didn't like the middle, but I enjoyed that one very much. Um, I'm forgetting one that I also really liked. The Stand? I haven't read The Stand. It's on my list. Uh, yeah. Green Mile is also on my list. I've heard great things about the Green Mile. Have you read that one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. a couple times. What, yeah. what what do you what would you recommend as my next king? Based off of you liking those two, uh, I mean, I always recommend Eleven Twenty Two Sixty Three to everybody just because I think it's it's a people pleaser. I think it's it's so unique for King because he doesn't write romance, but he actually writes romance pretty good. But Fire since you said you, get, you weren't really Sorry. crazy about the slice of life part in eleven twenty two sixty three, mm -hmm. it sounds like I don't think King uh, can write romance or women. Well, all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I told her to give me some happy feelings. Now look at this; she's cutting me. Just like <laughs> but, uh, I think he's extraordinary. You know what? I will say it's not that I didn't like the slice of life style of 11, 22, 63. I think King can write slice of white slice of life extraordinarily. That's why I liked one of the reasons why I like pet cemetery so well, it's basically an entire book of slice of life until the very end. Um, I just don't, I don't like his romance. I agree with Clayton here. Dolores Claiborne sounds like it'd be a, a home run for you. Okay. I think that'd be a really good one. And no, I didn't like then it. if you if you don't like the way that he writes Dolores, then I'll say, okay, then maybe maybe the way he writes ladies is just not for you, maybe. No, prove me wrong. I mean, I I've only read nine books. I've been he told this, that that's he not did enough this thing to... in the 90s where he took the approach. He talks about this in, in on writing his, his memoir, 
where he took this approach of writing as a woman and he used, you know, his wife as like his outlets for these things. And he, it really did show because it was that and Gerald's game, things like that. He wrote that was really just focusing on writing strong women and writing in a way that was believable, I think, you well, know, good not for him. And I think maybe he, I I've, maybe I've just read the it. wrong ones. It worked for some people and it, it didn't work for others. Uh, sure. see, yeah. A lot of people are saying, a lot of people are saying you should try Robert McCam. And that's the thing is if you like King, everyone's going to recommend uh, Robert McCam to you, but green mile would probably be a home run for you. I think, I think you'd like, green mile. I think that I one's going to be a hit for that's me. I, yeah. I think that'll be a good one for me for sure. Mm, mm, mm. I can't talk about Stephen King too much more because yeah, I don't think I can, I don't think I can take that. Cause you love him. I mean, yeah, but I mean, look, here's the thing is everybody's like, oh, you like every Stephen King book. I'm like, watch my review for Tommy Knockers. I do not love every Stephen King book. No one, no one is in, infallible to me uh, mm -hmm. at all, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just glad that you are reading some King, reading some Crichton and things like that. Mm -hmm. I know there are a lot yeah. of uh, fantasy tubers who won't, who won't touch those things, you know, won't step outside of their comfort zone. I think yeah, it's good. My I cousin a, would a nice cleanser once in a while. Yeah. We were uh, we were on vacation recently, and we went with my cousin and his family, Corey's cousin and his family, and uh, he read Pirate Latitudes on vacation, and he was like, oh, this was so fun. The ending wasn't great, but it was so fun. I need to read more Michael Creighton, and I was like, oh, no, no, <laughs> that's <laughs> not what he does. <laughs> yeah, no, no, probably, I would say it would say good. I have a good time with his books, but I wouldn't say it's, you know, it's fun. Yeah, no, probably not. What's yeah. our thoughts on the new cozy fantasy trend as we take? Is this this Legends and Lattes thing? Because I feel like the mm. only booktuber who hasn't read Legends and Lattes. Um, I've read it and it was really sweet. It was nice. I'm I'm not a cozy reader. It's not my thing. Um, but Legends and Lattes was nice. And uh I've tried a couple other cozy books and they're generally not my thing, but I'm glad other people are enjoying them. I think maybe I just haven't read enough to really even know what it is. Uh, for a while there, I was like, is, is cozy like the new buzzword for this for, to describe some of these books? Because I was like, I don't know what that means. I mean, it just, you feel I like think... you, can just, you wrap up a blanket and get a cup of tea and, and read the book. I don't really understand. You sit by the fire and read it. How, how does this so work? So Legends and Lattes is about an ogre, was she? Yeah, running a coffee shop. Was yeah, I, I, I Running a coffee. I can't remember what her race was but yes she's running a coffee shop and she's it's 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 she hires some people to help her out she has a baker she has somebody who helps do the serving and somebody who helps her with like the handiwork and it's just this cozy slice of life fun feel good story um and there's there's been a few cozy fantasy books that have come out that way for me fantasy isn't my only genre i read a lot of different genres. And if I'm going to go outside of your typical fantasy, I don't want to go in fantasy to go outside of your typical fantasy. You know what I mean? So I think that's why it's not hitting me right. Uh, the Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. That was pretty cozy. Yeah. 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 Totally. I mean, I mean, for, for, for some people, like I just said, I just read that Weird the Dead book and I talked about this, like how brutal and grim and hopeless and depressing it was and how much I loved it. And they were like, what? It's like, that's yeah, you either like that stuff or you don't like that stuff. Uh, AR wants to know something about Liza Lockamore. Maybe he just wants you to talk about why it's amazing, I guess. I don't know. Why is Liza Lockamore amazing? It's hilarious. That it's... was never my problem. I love the dialogue. I thought the dialogue. I know you don't like the flashbacks. The yeah. flashbacks were good, Mike. They were good. But like I was it was Green Arrow. <laughs> Shush. It was. Hey, we don't know was, how he's gonna get over this wall. Here's a flashback about how he knows how to. Call you can wall. have opinions about some things, but not all the things. So, <laughs> the flashbacks, yes, they are jarring at first, but they weave into each other so well that it's like when you're in the middle of action and then you're thrown back into the past. It's like, oh, okay. How is this going to tie into what we're about to do when we get back into the future? And it's a really unique narrative style. And he did a great job at it, Mike. Way too deus ex machina for me. Oh, I wrote my characters into a corner. How do I get them? A, how about a flashback about how they know how to get out of this? Oh, no, you're totally right about that. Absolutely. From a plotting perspective, it's weak. But from a character, from a just really unique, awesome story, from humor, from relationships within the characters it did so many things right that i acknowledge its flaws and i don't care so what do you feel about the sequels 
Do you like those? Oh, um, Red Seas Under Red Skies was phenomenal. Really? But it was nautical, so you may not like it. Okay. It's a, they, they are blackmailed into being pirates. And, um, and then book three is very political. It was my, it was my, it was the weakest of the three for me, but still great. Oh, it's just, everybody told me that you know, books two and three don't touch the first book. And I was like, well, I was lukewarm on the first book. So maybe I just, I was like, Hey, you know there what? Are, fine. I'll be fine. Having one less series where it's never going to be finished. That's fine by me as a song. There, of Ice are and Fire fan, very, there are varying opinions on the sequels. Some people love them. Some people find them to be the thing is, okay. The thing is, these books are not plot books. If you are a plot reader, you will find flaws in all of them. And I don't read books for some phenomenal plotting. I read books for characters, for vibes, like sink me into the story. And um, Lies of Locke Lamora is just something really special for me, but it absolutely has flaws. And uh, the flaws in book one don't go away in the sequels. So you sound like me you know, talking about Red Rising right now. Yeah, I, I know all these things that you guys are telling me are, are problems. I have problems with them too. Just the pros outweigh the cons for me, you know? So, yeah. That's killer. I think that's phenomenal. Love mm. what you love. Mm. <laughs> and I do think, I think that Red Rising isn't the same because I do think that the sequels greatly improve on mm. the first. Any interest in reading the sequels or are you good? I've read books one through three. I don't have interest in reading the newer editions personally. Okay. Um, partially because while I think that the series improved and I did enjoy books two and three far more than book one, it's still just, it's not my series. It doesn't belong okay. to me. And the fact that BookTube is so in love with the Red Rising series, like I don't want to be the downer. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to no, be that one like guy. That. I feel like yeah, I dude. Make people read this damn series. Uh, it's it's like no, I, everybody loves it. Everybody's reading it, and everybody loves it. Say so. I it's it, it's like the content that I make on the channel. That, like no one wants me to make because they have no interest in reading it. And it's that's like, so. Funny. I, I feel like I everybody loves Red Rising to the huh. point that it's like I am on an island, and and I don't hate the series. I didn't like book one, but books two and three I thought were solid books. It's just. You don't want to be the downer in the group. You know what I mean? So it's oh, like, sure. just love it. Just love it. I don't have to keep reading it. I, I hate being a wet blanket when people are loving <laughs> something. It's like, they'll ask yeah. my opinion and I'll give it. It's like, I thought that after Endgame, I thought, that's yeah, good for me with the, with, the, with the MCU. I'm good. If you guys are still loving it, that's great. I'll try to catch some occasionally. I'll be like, yeah, this is subpar, guys. They're like, no, it's still amazing. I'm like, all right, look, okay cool i'm not gonna be a wet blanket you guys are enjoying it great you guys like what disney plus has done to star wars awesome i'm not gonna be the wet blanket that tells you why i don't like it but if they ask me i'll tell them i'll be honest no mm. i'm i'm with you i'll i'll give my honest opinion but i'm really just not interested like i just want people to like stuff so if it's not not my seat happy to bow out what's your most nuclear hot take though when it comes to like any video or anything, just the Harry Potter stuff. Is that, that, that won't, what would you say is your I mean, biggest hot take? Like you're making my most unpopular opinion video. What would it be? I don't know. I feel like based off of reception, red rising would be up there. Mm. Um, I didn't, fits. I, I didn't fall in <laughs> love with what's that. Everybody's saying fits would be your biggest hot take. Fits, Good one. <laughs> good one. Thanks for reminding me of that. Um, I did not have a positive reaction to A Song of Ice and Fire when I read it, um, but I'm a very different reader now than I was back then, so it is a series that I plan on giving another go and seeing if I can jive with it now better than I did when I was first getting into adult fantasy. Um, I don't know. I don't really think I'm a hot... I don't, I don't have that many hot takes. I don't think... Great entertainment. But I try to sometimes. Uh, I, I, God, I just have one. I just forgot what it was. I think I talked about recently uh, uh, some series that maybe, maybe I was in the wrong place when I tried the first time, and I thought I would try them again. And the first book I tried, I wanted to strangle myself. It was so bad, and <laughs> I was like, maybe, maybe, maybe sometimes your first instinct is the correct one. 
You know, you yeah, did, like, that's true. And all There's been a reaction to. Did you go back to it and try it again? And you were like, nope, still there. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I've had that. I've had that with. I've had it in both directions where there's a series that I'm kind of lukewarm on or I didn't love. And then I try a second time and I'm like, oh my goodness, Liza Lockamora is a great example of that. When I was first getting into adult fantasy, Liza Lockamora was the first books that I tried. And I was like, I, it was fine. I don't know. I don't know. And then I came back and tried it again once I was proper into it. And it's my favorite series now. Um, so absolutely I've had that, but I've also had it where it's like, maybe I just wasn't in the right place. And I try again and I'm like, no. <laughs> this one's just not mine. Well, I'm talking about Brent Weeks, which always seems to come up with me. Brent Weeks, uh, Night Angel. Oh my God. Oh, you didn't like how it ended? I didn't like anything about it. <laughs> I don't know. I never got to the ending. So I thought, okay, maybe I just went into it with a weird set of expectations the first time. I'll try it again. And I think I hated it even more the second time I tried it. But uh, uh, yeah. I mean, we all have that, that one author, I think, that just where you think that they're really talented, but they try to do too much. They try to go too extreme one way, or in the case of Brit Weeks, he always, always has to try to do an M night Shyamalan twist and it completely jumps the shark. And it just, it frustrates you. It's like, it's like when Metallica was yeah. at their peak and they kept putting out subpar albums and you're like, it's not because the album's bad because you know, they have so much more potential and it feels like your kid isn't actually applying themselves to something. That's how I feel about Brent Weeks because I think he's super talented. He's probably wrote the greatest magic system, not by Brandon Fingers. Oh, but yeah. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah, I love Amazing. his magic system. But he had to try to force some kind of twist into his story that completely ruined it. So it's uh, interesting. Uh, I've it's heard a cool. lot of negative reception to the ending of that series. Uh, yeah, it happens. We all have those authors that I think that uh, rise our blood pressure a little bit. And again, it's not because we, we're haters, it's just because I feel like, dude, the guy's a very talented writer. Stop doing this. Stop doing this. Stop doing this thing. At least that's my opinion. So anything you want to talk about before we go? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I feel like we've covered a really good range. What do you, what do you, what do you, you read? Oh, you're reading, you're reading Wisdom of Crowds. Wisdom of Crowns, yes, as well as I'm Glad My Mom Died. These are the two books that I'm into right now. What an uh, interesting name for a book. Have you not heard of this, Mike? Mm -mm. Oh, man. Okay. It's it's a nonfiction. It's, um, so Jeanette McCurdy, she was, a, uh, she was a Nickelodeon star when I was, when I was a wee lad. And um, she got out of the game. And now as an adult, she's come out with this book where she's basically talking about her abusive household, but mm. she's also talking about the abuse within Hollywood and the messed up systems around child acting. Uh, so um, it's, it's a very interesting read. Very interesting read. Uh, child acting Hollywood in general. These are things that I have opinions on anyway. <laughs> so right. reading from her firsthand perspective has been very interesting. Sounds quite sobering. Yeah. When it comes to nonfiction, I pretty much stick to like books about the JFK assassination or, or rock biographies. Sure. You know, that's, that's pretty much sure. my thing. Where my wife yeah, got I real got big into this, into this nonfiction thing for a while. And now she's finally started to come back. She's going to read Lonesome Dove with me later this year. So I'm excited for that. I'm still trying to get her to read First Law. I actually, she picked up like some random paperback I got mailed from Bain and started reading. I was like, what are you doing? Why are you reading that? She's like, I don't know. It was there. So I, one night I went and I replaced it and I put the hardcover of Blade itself by her bedside. <laughs> she just Did laughed. she do it? Mm, not yet. You would hear the, the dumbest reason that she won't read it. Because when I was reading Why? it the first time, she thought Jazal was a stupid name. That so is she's, a dumb she's like, she didn't want to read it because the name was stupid. I was like, are you serious? Are you yep. serious? Right I'm trying to get Corey into Abercrombie as well. My husband, I've tried to get him to read. I used to be able to manipulate him into reading by saying, I don't want an anniversary gift. Just read a book. That's all I want. Oh, and, <laughs> and it worked. Used to work. But now it's like we've been married for nine years. And he's like, I don't care about that. <laughs> but I've been trying to get him into Best Serve Cold because it's standalone. It's a standalone. It's not that big of a commitment. You can start there. 
and it is a stupid name. And he started it and then he just falls off. I get this from the library. He reads it in three days. He's finished it before me, no which kidding. is so rude. I'm sitting at my computer working and he's sitting next to me reading. That's not cool. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. It I, isn't the best lastly, name. Everybody's just agreeing. Lastly, I have to ask your opinion on DNFs. How often do you DNF? Oh, I'm not. I'm not shy about dnfing really a lot of the books that i quit on i don't end up talking about on the channel because it's like it's not fun to me to just be like here's a book i didn't read it you know what i mean um but yeah i <laughs> this always puts people on edge i don't think it's that big of a deal i was reading a mystery last month and i quit on the last chapter i never found out who did it wow you know, Here's the thing: is my know. wife will quit a mystery book, but she will always flip to the end to see the resolution. Really? I don't. You, if you lose interest, you lose interest. It got well, really complicated. Like, At you first, I was into it, to knowing how it resolved, and you were still nah. interested. Yeah. I was so into it. I had my strings on the wall, trying to connect it all. I had all my elaborate theories. I was so into it, and it just got more and more and more convoluted until I was like, you know what? I'm not having fun anymore. I'm gonna read something else, and that was that. Um. Mike, you're going to not like me for this one. I think I'm about to DNF Hyperion. Oh. I'm. No, I can I'm, see that now clicking for everybody. It's like. Really? Doing, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to like it so bad. I, I've even read The Priest's Tale and I thought it was good, but I'm just not jiving. Like I'm just not. It's not clicking with me. So I don't think I don't think I'm gonna see it through. I'm trying to remember which one it is. I like it's, it's, it's what I call the dad shit. The stuff where like as a parent, it'll, it'll emotionally assassinate you. But I can't remember exactly the priest tale. Oh, or, is it the priest tale? Is that what it's called? The one with the daughter aging in aging reverse backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I just finished, really? and it's my favorite one that I've read of the four. I thought it, it was didn't very crush you? good. Yeah, then it's fine. I enough. felt things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did. I thought it was good. It's, I'm not, I don't, I, it's not like a hate thing. It's just, I'm just not, I'm not jiving with it. Okay. That, that happens. I mean, a lot of the times, a lot of popular, popular books, I'll start be like, man, why does everybody love this? Am I reading Scholar's the right Tale. Book? Scholar's Tale. Scholar's yeah. Tale. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's good. Well, I think the thing is also is, is uh, my youngest kid's named Alex and I call him Alex Gator. So the see you later alligator part of that part got oh. me. So, so maybe it was a little yeah. bit of a cheat, a little bit of a cheater, but no, that's, would no, say, it's good. It, it was a really good story. You are allowed to love it. I don't want to be your downer. Um, no, it was very no. good. I just, Fine. yeah. When it comes to science fiction, I feel like it, I completely understand if it does a clicker. And then there just comes all those years of everyone my age telling me how boring Dune was, you know, where I just got desensitized sure. to it, where I'm like, I understand that some books aren't going to be for everybody. You mm -hmm. know, in fact, I think the thing with Dune is I expect everybody to dislike it. So it never hurts my feelings when people say they didn't like it. You know, so uh, I, I don't know. Would you say you're not as into sci-fi as you are into fantasy or? I don't read nearly as much sci-fi, um, but no, I think I, I am into it. Like I read Do Android's Stream of Electric Sheep recently and I thought it was great. Uh, I'm currently reading Dawn uh, very, very slowly by Octavia E. Butler. And I've read several Octavia. I've she's one of my favorite lot, authors. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's one of my favorite authors. I love her stuff. Michael Creighton. I love his stuff. So yeah, I do I do read sci-fi. Um, I think I, I like classic sci-fi more than modern usually. Um, oh, you like Hitchhiker's but... Guide. Oh, it's one of my oh, all-time favorite series. So glad that you love that because I think that's one of my favorite. top five series. I read that when I was younger and just just brought me just laughing to tears. And I was so happy last year I reread it because someone sent me that Folio Society edition and I just I've still laughed. I love it. It's so charming. So good. One of the he was best a genius. Every theories. single paragraph ends in a joke and it lands every single time. That guy is brilliant. <laughs> it really He's does. Cool. It really does. My channel name, my handle is Murphy Napier 42 for hitchhikers. Nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, 42 is a great number until I turned that age. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe not. Well, I can't <laughs> say thank you enough for hanging out with me. And you're you're in bad weather conditions and you're still hanging out with me and stuff on a Friday night. I know you, you, you youngsters have just awesome stuff going on on Friday nights. Really you young. Spent two hours talking to me. That's 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 so nice of you. I do appreciate. I've that got two you. kids. There's nothing to do. Yeah. See, your kids are that age where well, when people you, people used to ask me. I'm sure you get this question a lot. How do you find time to read so much? I'm like, dude, when your kids are like, they're too old to be left alone, but they're old enough to leave you alone. 
You well, I have a three-year-old, yeah. so I'm not quite there. Mm. <laughs> She's still at my hip at all times, yeah, but she naps about, every day. Everybody talks about terrible twos. Horrible threes were way worse for me. So <laughs> yeah. three um, majors, my wife called them. Yeah, I feel like I have a cheat code uh, just because, you know, we adopted her at two and a half. And now she's three and a half, but, uh, just with the way things worked out, she's just, she's my little shadow. She's my mini me. Mm -hmm. And I think just because of the attachment and because of what we've been through together, um, it's just a different ball game. Like three has been, she's just wonderful. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll set her up with a pile of books and toys and stuff and I'll read next to her or I'll read while she's napping or after she Man, goes to bed at night. The diaper that phase. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yes. Uh, which I could go back and do it that way. So, yeah. well, I do appreciate this for real. I'm glad we finally got to do it. And uh, I wish you nothing but continued success. You are very Thanks, much a, a trailblazer and we're all just kind of following your lead. And uh, yeah. I think this has been it's very wonderful. sweet of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've, this has been a great chat. Thanks so much for having me on and for being patient with me as I've taken too long to come on. That's all right. It worked out just fine. I'm very, very happy that we were able to do it. And uh, maybe uh, maybe I'll read one piece so we can talk about it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> all right. It's official. Good. It's happening. He's downloaded Viz. Uh, well, not yet, but I figure I probably, I probably can. So thank you guys for joining us. And uh, I will talk to everyone soon. I love this part where